Hello, Scenario 2 VOD people. <laughs> Welcome back. Surprised to see you here. Okay, so we did our city event. We had to pay 10 collective gold. Uh, it added a city event to the, the deck. We paid the 10 collective gold from George. And then we bought Eagle Eye Goggles for George as well. Basically, we don't have enough money. So I probably want an Invis Cloak next on the Void Warden. I want Winged Shoes next on the Red Guard. I can't afford either of those yet, but I certainly could afford to buy Eagle Eye Goggles on Hatchet, um, which I think is fine. Again, our AoE combo at level 1, the attack 3, target 2, This is it's fine to have Goggles for that. And then it'll also be good to have the Goggles on boss fights when we're going to our try to do our attack uh, 18. So I think Goggles are a reasonable pickup. And the next head item I would want on Hatchet instead is significantly higher Prosperity. So yeah, Goggles I think are just fine. All right. Uh, the group I first played with taught me that collective always meant divided as evenly as possible. <laughs> yeah, right. That group clearly didn't have a scoundrel in it. Or maybe it did. Not the worst mistake I ever learned or made on my own. I find these rules that try to dictate resource sharing inside the group weird. Yeah. I mean, like, to be clear, what you can argue is, all right, so if, if people don't agree to do it differently, then at that point, it has to be forced as evenly as possible, right? Because if no one's going to volunteer to share more money, then the fairest way is to make it even sharing. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, here, this wouldn't make any sense to share it evenly. For example, so there we've got two different orders. We've got order of significance of items and order of which someone's going to loot. So order of significance of items is going to be Red Guard wants items the most by far, significantly more than Hatchet, and then Hatchet to a reasonable degree, and then really Void Warden who barely uses any items. At least for now. And and then order of looting is going to be like this by far and away the most, and then this, and then this. So I mean it it's just pretty obvious that like looting by far the most and far second in terms of wanting items this just makes sense to spend gold there but yeah i mean if i was playing in a group party i mean i think typically the people i play with the person i don't i don't know anyone who would be playing this like of groups that i play with whether my wife my friends in france my friends i play with in the us um i don't know anyone who would be playing hatchet and not volunteer the, the cash here based on the, the distribution we had of cash there um i've never played with someone like that but if you did have people like that in your group then you would yeah have to force collective sharing i guess but this, to me, makes sense. Like, in this is me playing solo, but if I were playing in a group and I were playing as Hatchet, I would certainly give this up. It's not like, I mean, again, I'm looking at these items that I'm going to get soon, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to eventually get an Invis Cloak, and that's it like for now. So I've got, like, 20 gold to spend, and all this, and I mean, so after all this, I have 20 gold that I want, and 4 gold, and I'm probably going to get 20 gold in one to two scenarios, so yeah. I kept all my catch as Hatchet. <laughs> Fair enough. The typical scoundrel. Yeah, I mean, it's good if the scoundrel understands that they should share money, though, right? Okay, so we first need to do our road event, and then we can set up the next scenario. So this is now scenario two. Just for fair warning, I guess we need to switch the title of the stream. So normally when I do scenario two, I go down to plus one difficulty. So just a solo bump and nothing else. Because scenario two, like, for example, when people ask, new players ask about, like, the suggested difficulty level, and I'm like, yeah, you should play them. I mean, all right. For example, people have been like, yeah, I came from Jaws Lion. We were playing on a higher difficulty. So can I start Jaw Gloomhaven on a higher difficulty? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Start a plus one. This, you'll definitely find this more challenging if you're an experienced Gloomhaven player at this point after going through Jaws Lion. That being said, even to those people I recommend, just go back to zero for Scenario 2. Scenario 2 sucks. Um, and I don't say that often about Gloomhaven. In general, I like most Gloomhaven scenarios, but Scenario 2 sucks. Boss scenarios don't, in general, suck. Scenario 2 sucks. Scenario 2 sucks because... What the boss flips drastically alters the difficulty of the scenario. If he comes out and flips the certain cards consecutively, it's just a like night and day difference. Like, I don't know. It's just, This scenario is an RNG nightmare. I really, really dislike this scenario, actually. It's really crazy to me that this is actually the second scenario. I think it's cool that for, like, and this was sort of like the Gloomhaven demo stuff, to have had a boss fight for the second scenario, but I really don't think these boss fight mechanics are very good for a second scenario. Yeah, it's good that your, your scoundrel has done those donations. I mean, this makes sense. All right. Um, so anyway, normally, my point is normally I would recommend going down difficulty, and I personally would want to as well, but after beating up on Gloomhaven for the last two weeks, on average, in digital and stuff like that, and then just having a pretty easy time in that first scenario at plus two, I don't really, I would feel kind of 
lame to go down to plus one here. I think at plus two, it's not that I feel like I'm more likely to win or lose. It's more like the reason I recommend people go down on difficulty for the scenario is because you don't want to repeat this scenario because it's just not fun. I mean, it, all right, it has the possibility of just being not fun. Again, because, well, to me, it's not fun. Some people find it interesting, but basically any scenario where card flips, random card flips have more agency in determining the outcome of the scenario than your decisions is typically not very fun to me. So I'm still going to do it here at plus two for entertainment value more than anything. If I were playing by myself and not streaming, I would just go down to plus one just to get through this scenario and to get to play regular Gloomhaven again. I can't even play on easy with the Y because I start raging if I think we lost. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so let us set up the no. So road event first. Please don't be rude to me with the road events here when I'm about to do this scenario. Please. Okay. Well, that one's easy. Oh God damn it! The state based things. You used to just be able to press a number to change the state on these things, but now pressing a number draws it to your hand. Yep. This does go back into the deck. I'm almost 100% positive. Yep, there we go. Shuffled. And back. Okay. Alright, so I already changed the the screen. Uh, scenario two is probably why if you Google Gloomhaven, the first autocomplete is too hard. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Alright, so we, we got no effect from the the uh, road event. But it's one that goes back in. Shuffle all the stuff up. Alright, so let's set up. So, game setup. Scenario. Oh, this is scenario level. That's not what we want. Oh, it's mod. Okay, yeah. Scenario seven, scenario number two, revealed rooms. Not actually revealed rooms. It's rules is written to be clear, but uh, yep. Create map. Well, you're all excellent scoundrels, and again, this makes sense to me. Like that's something good a scoundrel can do. Should we have donated? Actually, I guess we didn't have enough money to donate. But you're right. We should actually be... Oh, but I guess I'm, I don't care about unlocking classes, right? Yeah, I don't care about unlocking classes, so I shouldn't actually donate. Never mind. Nah. Oh, it's not... It's not that... No, I should be donating. Yeah, I should be donating. Yeah, I don't care about that. I do I do care about donating. All right, I'll start donating on the hatchet. I mean, here we didn't have the money. It definitely made sense to buy the eagle eye goggles. Okay. So... Yeah, I was confusing two different things there. All right. Scenario two. The goal is to kill the... Bandit Commander and all revealed enemies. Special rules is add three curse cards to each character's attack modifier deck as a scenario effect. Fun. Another reason this scenario is questionable. I mean, like, throwing this randomness on top of all the other randomness to me is just... <sighs> to be clear, I guess some people do enjoy this. This is not what appeals to me as a Gloomhaven player, though. Like, randomness heaped on randomness, right? I could not imagine maintaining the physical version throughout a campaign. <laughs> eh, you do. I don't know. It was fun. I enjoyed it. But yeah, I mean, after this, it's... that's how I feel now about Mage Knight, right? I have Mage Knight up on a shelf, and I don't know if I'll ever play it again, because playing the, the digital version is so much easier. But this was a little bit different. I enjoyed the, the physical aspect of it. I mean, I did pre-order Frosthaven. I guess I wasn't sure that I actually needed to do that. But anyway, um, all right. So we got to kill all revealed enemies in the boss. Uh, let's check the boss. So boss is not immune to poison. That's good to know. Has 39 health. Okay. You could draw every modifier card three times and use the average to reduce RNG. No, I mean, that, that's not so much. I, I don't mind the modifier deck in general. I think this is fine. I just think, like, my point more is what I don't like is this scenario is already very RNG heavy. And... Adding the curses into the deck just makes it more RNG heavy, right? That's more my point. All right. So the archer is just going to have normal stats. Nothing special to do here. Oh, yeah, we need to change cards. 
Um, I'm going to quickly use this opportunity. I mean, this sort of sucks because I know the recording already started, but I did want to do it. Like, I think generally people for the recording prefer to see like item purchases and stuff like that. So that's why I did start the recording, but I actually do have to quickly go to the bathroom before I get into this next scenario. So the recording is going to have a tiny bit of dead time, which I do feel a little bit bad about, but um, yeah, sorry. I'll be right back very quickly and then we'll get into scenario number two. Very sneaky to have done that while I was gone. Thank you very much for the, the subscription. I do really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sorry that I wasn't able to thank you immediately, but thank you nonetheless. I do really appreciate it. All right, well, let's see if we can live up to the hype for the scenario. So what we have to do now is we need to switch out some cards. Um, just realistically one card, which is this one we want in. I don't think we want any of these other things. We should look, are there traps for this scenario? We're not looking down there. So there's two stun traps and we see them already in the first room and pushes are not gonna do anything. Ooh, but pull is gonna be insane in this first room. Oh my God. It's rare that pull is so great for traps, but here it's going to be filthy. All right, so we wanna sub in double throw. We wanna sub out something. Realistically, I guess we just don't really want our AOE combo. I mean, the AOE combo I guess is good in the first room. It actually is good in the first room, like very first turn. So maybe it's fine to keep that. I guess we just also don't need a million things of movement. So we could cut something like second wind. Power pitch we want because our plan is to do power pitch top, double throw bottom. Terrible initiative, but we'll put ourselves in a position hopefully where that doesn't matter. Hmm. Yeah, it, it feels like the AOE combo or movement is the only thing we can really cut. I guess it's going to be movement then. I mean, initiative is kind of important here, but maybe not that important. I could really cut the AOE combo, but it's just, it is so good in the first room. Like really, really good in the first room. The question is whether we actually need help in the first room, but I think it's too good to pass up here. I will definitely not use the eagle eye goggles on this though, to be clear, because I'm going to save that for the boss. And I don't believe, I think we're going to get through this first room quickly enough. What the hell? I think we're going to get through this first room quickly enough that we aren't going to have time to long rest before going into the next room. That's my expectation. So accordingly, I'm going to save my goggles rather than be forced to long rest while we're actually fighting the boss. Um, so do we want to make any changes here? So we want this actually, we really do. This is an attack seven on the boss. I don't think we really want any of this other stuff. 
And the boss is not immune to wound or poison, is it? No. So we do really want to get both those things on the boss. Only way to wound is a bottom action, but we can work that out somehow. Uh, so what do we not want? Uh, we probably Shield Spikes is actually not great here. We're going to need to move a lot because the boss teleports around often. So we won't have the luxury of doing a, move, a heal without moving. And then... We tanking up on this boss is not really the way to go. We just have to race him down. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Just to swap that in for that. Same time, we only have one way of creating fire then. One non-loss way. And we really want fire for this. That gets a bit risky. What else could we potentially cut? Certainly want all our movement cards. This is our way of getting wound. Our only way of getting wound. So we certainly want that. I guess the disarm doesn't actually do anything, but the move six jump could allow us to keep up with him. We don't have the jump boots yet, so this could prevent us from getting bogged down. This is just incredible in the first room. Could also just be healing sands. I guess it's just a move three, basically. I mean, it's just such a free move three is the thing. I hate that you just have to hope the boss opens the room with the chest in it. I hate many things about this scenario. Um, yeah, this is good initiative. This is another fire creator. I just, I don't see myself using this much. It's more likely that I use this. So who cares? If, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a fire creator that we don't use, right? Or we'll let him live until he does. Yeah. I mean, here I'm just going to try to kill him. So what if we don't get the chest? Alright, and that's for the red or Void Warden. Oh. We can actually get the guaranteed wound with this. I mean, Stunning Curse don't do anything. This gives us a wound and poison. At the same time, we can get poison so easily with our other card. Hey, failed scenario, more content. That's true. We'll see. So the only question is, should we bring Grasp of Doom? Just an easier way to apply Wound. It's not an easier way to apply Poison, though. Our ranged way of applying Poison is the best one. And it's not so likely that we're going to get next to the boss that quickly. Uh, that's tough. That is tough. I think not. I definitely don't want Sap. I'm, I only need to have Poison him once, right? So Sap Strength is definitely not where I want to be. I don't think I have any cards that I would really want to cut. I mean, I guess the boss is immune to curses. But this bottom loss is okay. When we get into the second room, our first priority is going to be to kill the archers and then to kill the boss. This is sort of a way of damaging the boss or damaging the two archers at once. Which is pretty good. Yeah, I think we'll just stay as we are. I don't I don't see myself next to getting next to the boss. Isn't opening the chest the real scenario? Actually, I guess, I guess I don't remember what's in the chest. I guess we'll see. I mean, generally speaking, the chest is a scenario goal for me, but I hate this scenario so much that I don't want to have to repeat it. So for me, here the goal. You're right. In general, my priority first is getting in the chest, then getting a scenario for most scenarios. That's not the case here because I don't want to have to do this again. All right. So. Something like this. Is nothing special? Hmm. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, we'll, we'll try to get it, obviously. It's pretty unlikely that on plus two difficulty, we kill him before he opens two rooms, to be clear. Again, unless he just keeps summoning south at skeletons, which is the lamest thing about this scenario, but... Okay, so this, for sure, because a two-target pull is great. We have to move up, actually, to be able to do it, because pulling this one doesn't... But this still works, right? Pull, pull. We stun both of them and hit both of them. So what else do we want to do, then? So we'd like to probably go at 14 initiative. It's not a bad idea. Because then we actually get to... Guarantee go before they can ever go. This also gives us a way to set up light. And then we can do an amazing twirling stabs next turn. Yeah, for sure. It's just, it's just great. Red guard could solo this room in like two turns. <laughs> it's just insane. This is like the red guard's dream room. All right. But, that being said, we brought our AoE combo specifically for this, so let's just go ahead and do this turn one, and then turn two we'll set up um, the favorite. We're in range, oh, so we actually have to be here. That's fine, though. Okay, and then Void Warden. So, we're just, so what basically everyone's telling me here is that I'm not needed, so I can just go ahead and set up my cards. Ooh, I probably should not bring this healing ability though, right? Yeah, actually. So we're bringing this no matter what. In truth, 
once we're in combat, healing is not really where we want to be at, and the forced movement one is not great either. So actually, I should just bring this anyway. I was looking at other cards for considerations whether I want to bring them, but the better question is, do I have any cards that I don't want? And the healing ability I really don't want once we're in combat. The same could be said for this, but this actually moving us and an ally can be useful. And I think that's better than Sap Warmth, which again, I, I'm already going to... I have two ways to poison him now. Okay. Um... Uh... So what to do? I mean, I guess I just set up Master Influence, and then what do we do as a bottom action? I guess we stun the one other one, in case it's not already just all dead. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, but I don't really want to curse myself, do I? Because I'm actually going to be making attacks with the monster deck at some point here. I already have three curses. I don't want to use this either, because I, I need these attacks when we get into the next room, right? I need to keep all my attacks. I mean, this is so good to use here, because I'm just not going to have another opportunity to use this in the next room, because we're going to have to move a bunch once we go in. So it is a good opportunity to use a bottom down move. Could use a heal instead. No, I think this makes sense. I mean, what is one more curse? He says. Cue the foreboding. Ah, foreshadowing. Foreboding music. Foreshadowing. There we go. All right. I think we're good. Battle goals. Battle goals. Ooh, wow. We are so good at this game. It's almost like we are a professional streamer. Professional Gloomhaven player. Or some such nonsense. All right. Flip them if you got them. So, use no items during the scenario. Gain seven or few experience, experience points during the scenario. Uh, I can do this. I mean, I gained eight last time. It shouldn't be too hard to gain. At the same time, I'm going to be playing a lot of losses here. More losses than normal. Ooh. With Master Influence on the first turn already. But use no items. My boots? I don't guarantee need my boots, but... It's more likely that I gain seven or fewer experience. Also, getting perks on the Void Warden is not the most important thing in the world. At least until we get to level four. I mean, I do want them. I do want them. What the... Why can't you just go to a normal spot? There we go. Alright, kill a monster during the scenario by causing at least three more points of damage than necessary. Take only short rest during the scenario. We will take only short rest during the scenario. That's definitely a thing that is happening. <laughs> okay. And reveal a room to Albert or door. I mean, open a door or cause a trap to be sprung. Well, we can never cause a trap to be sprung since they're both going to be sprung here by the Red Guard. So let's be the one to open the door. We have to open that one door. That's fine, though. We can do that. We can make that happen. All right. So now all we've got to do is win, and we can get all these check marks. Yeah. Just on this scenario. Hmm. All right. Let's start it up. Archers at 44. Uh, it's not multi-target, is it? I guess let's get in the habit. No, plus one attack, though. That's fine. Okay. So we're going to use the bottom of this, creating light. I'm going to go here, uh, and we're going to attack number four and number five with the top of swift strength, making attack two pull ones on each of them. There we go. We'll do... I know I've already shuffled all this stuff, but one more time for good luck or bad luck. We'll do left to right. I wouldn't even mind drawing some curses here so that I didn't have them going forward, to be honest. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Oh, it's actually the hatchet first. Whoops. Well, anyway. This shouldn't change anything. I'm so used to the Inox being the frontline character that I just, you know. But yeah. I'm also used to the Red Guard going first, which happens basically every round. So actually, first, we're going to do this. Technically, these still have 6 health and 6 health. I'll just, I mean, it shouldn't matter. And they're here and here, but we have range to hit all of them. So we use the bottom of Fancy Hat to add plus one to all our attacks this round. We use the top of Disorienting Barrage to make an attack one, or attack two on each of them accordingly. Attack two muddle. Like I said, I, um, I, normally I would use the goggles for this, but I don't, like, this room is easy enough. I don't need help dealing with this room, and I certainly want help dealing with the next room. I mean, I definitely want to have my goggles for the next room, so I'll just not use the goggles here, even though this is a very valuable goggle. So we'll do four, five, six in that order. So, okay, that's fine. 
Like I said, I actually don't mind drawing out these curses here. That was actually pretty good. I'm not modeling the other two because they're stunned. Does it like, does this mod auto get rid of my curses as well? With every other th amazing thing this mod does, I wouldn't even be surprised. Could I count on it to do that for me? Okay, so that's done. That's done. So this one here is muddled. It's not going to move away to lose disadvantage because it can't lose disadvantage. It attacks the red guard with disadvantage. Okay, minus one. So minus one plus one. It does. Oh, nice. Does it do it at the end of the round then is how it works? It would like check for shuffles. And... Okay, yeah, so I'll try to stop getting rid of those. It was gross. Yeah, that's amazing. This mod's great. All right, so plus one, minus one ends up being three total. That's, uh... No. I'm never playing shield spikes. Did I even bring shield spikes? I cut it, right? Yeah, I cut it. So I'll just use the shield now. No reason not to. Nothing changes anything either one way or another. So we take two damage. Does it the other round. Cool. And these two are stunned. All right. Then we go in the Void Warden. So we're going to curse ourselves. Just got rid of this curse. And stun range three. We're going to stun the full health one since it's the least likely to die next round. And then we're going to use the top of Master Influence and set it up. It'll also get rid of whatever's left in the decks at the end of the scenario. Now, will it? Even with these cards? Okay, cool. Oh, but that's only if I do scenario one or loss, and then it's just going to bug out on me. So that's fine. I can just do that myself. Oh, it, oh, from the decks like that. Gotcha. But then again, I would have to do the scenario one or loss thing, wouldn't I? Okay. So, we're doing this. And we need to go before they can move away, which is 14. So that's this or this. I guess this, because I'll want that movement to get to the next room, and this is not actually particularly helpful in the next room. It won't crash, to be clear. Yeah, but normally after you make, I mean, at least again, from my experience using this in frost saving testing, once you start making some errors, you start making more errors. I mean, it, it like as soon as I some stuff gets messed up, typically everything starts to break. From again, my personal experience with this, again not using this exact mod, but using a variation of this for Frosthaven, which is where I have the most experience with like the scripting of this mod. So that's why I'm just super cautious about ever making it angry. Okay, we can do a bottom heal here. I'm gonna want this back, but I can stand and push it back. That's fine. And we could scratch to finish off the stunned one. This just makes sense. Again, twirling stab should kill this and this. Got the curse in our deck, so you never know. And then we get to make an attack after, gifted attack after that on one of these. I mean, on this one that's stunned. Because in case this one doesn't die, it will actually probably move away. And as a bottom, we can heal the red guard. Because the red guard's missing some health, and this is a good opportunity to heal him. Um, which I would rather do, even though it uses my best attack. Like I said, I can stand and potion it back. Okay, and so for us, time to set up, I mean, you could set up the favorite next turn, just attack this turn. That's probably more reasonable, right? We could actually use this attack, and then we don't need to use our bottom heal, because that, that actually works pretty well. I think we should have one turn to move towards the door where we can set up the favorite. We should just keep fighting for now. Uh, we'll still have move. Yeah. We should still have enough movement. Even if we use this here, I think. I guess we did cut a move three. Maybe we'll just use this here. Just throw away. Yeah, because I'm not going to use this right away. Not this rest cycle, at least. Even once we get into the next room, we're going to be fighting archers to begin with before we fight the. Before we fight, before we fight the boss. Um, okay. So, what are we doing for a bottom here? Well, we wicked scratch. Just throw away it. I mean, yeah, we just play like something like this. To be honest, just this also lets us go early. It gives us a better chance of killing the side one if it doesn't get killed by twirling stabs. And it's not like we're about to use this, so. Just using this as default bottom makes sense. All right, they're doing the immobilized thing. Okay. 
respect. So red guard first. We're going to gain one experience, consume light, and make an attack three, target all adjacent enemies. So we'll do four, five, six in that order. That's the worst one to have missed on. Okay. Should be fine, I guess. We got a plus one here, so this is down to that. All right. All right, all right. And then as a bottom action, we just have a default move too. But I need to stay next to these things, so yeah, I do nothing. No, I play this as a loss to gain three shield and create two elements. All right. Uh, so now we're going to use the top of Wicked Scratch. We're going to gain one experience. Ooh, battle goal slipping away. Yeah, it's so unlikely we succeed that in the end. Oh, well. We're going to gift an attack with Wicked Scratch, targeting the Bandit Archer. Because of Master Influence, we have advantage. We don't get plus one attack, though, because we have no elements to consume. But hopefully advantage should be good enough. Well, I hate to see the crit go away like that, but still, at least it's an enemy not attacking. Okay. And then we have a default move, too, with the bottom signs of the Void. Well, moved here. Two elements, what? Yeah, I was I was making a joke that I was going to play the bottom of... Because I, I used this top, and then I had a bottom left to do. And since I didn't need to move, I didn't need the default move too. So I was just making a joke that I would use the bottom of Shield of the Desert to give myself Shield 3 and create two elements. But I'm obviously not doing that. It was just a joke. Did you use the correct deck? I believe I did. Yeah, red guard deck is correct. So the uh, what is it? So this just grants one ally within range three may perform attack three. Okay, and the master influence rule is just in addition when you grant monsters attacks, they use your attack modifier deck. This is to prevent when you curse enemies, the curse is coming back to bite you when you make them attack, right? And getting to use a better modifier deck for the attacks. But when you grant allies attacks, you use their deck. So this was supposed to be red guard deck. Red guard deck. All right, we created dark. Not that this is very likely to matter here. And an archer, just go. This one is stunned. So then the hatchet goes. So we'll make an attack two, range three, using the top of this, targeting the remaining archer. I, I want a plus zero or a curse here. A curse is fine, plus zero is fine. <sighs> Hate to see it. Got it, I just came and thought it's Void's turn. It was Void's turn. It's just that we granted an attack to an ally. But yeah, yeah I understand. I, I get why you didn't understand what was going on. Uh, and so then we get to do heal two on an adjacent ally. Perfect. And then we've got the bottom of double throw, which is just going to be a default move too. Okay, the end of turn looting works, but I also click in the wrong order. Well, we'll try. All right, so it got rid of the curses, I think, or the curse. All right, so we can't go in this turn. Because we need to set up the favorite before we go in. That's a given. I mean, it all worked out there, so it's sort of fine. Mm, now, because, like, I'm like, yeah, I could set up Flame Shroud, right? But this is just dumb. Even though this would be some free damage, theoretically, um, I'm going to need this move. So, in the end, we don't have a lot to do there. Actually, none of us really have anything to do. Wait, Redgar wasn't adjacent. Unless you misspoke, I'm not familiar with the card's language. Uh, I might have misspoke saying adjacent ally. So, it's one ally within range two may perform attack three. I, the Redguard needed to be adjacent to the, the monster, which it was. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, I, I just threw out adjacent ally. I don't know why I was saying that. On the heel. Oh, sorry. Yep, I, I did miss... Well, I... All right. So... I, I talked about this card last time, but fair. Uh, yeah, so it's target one ally adjacent to the target of the attack. So adjacent, I meant to the the target that we attacked. I meant the red guard is adjacent to the target, so we get to heal too. So yeah, I understand you weren't familiar with the card's language. Yep. All right. Yeah, so this turn actually does sort of suck for everyone here, but it definitely makes sense to not... I mean, it doesn't make sense to open the door and not have an attack ready. I played Void Warden the other week, and Gift of Void was just amazing. The whole class is so much fun. Gift of Void is amazing. And I think the class is a lot of fun, too. I know it's not for everyone, but I love it. 
Um, I mean, all right. So the thing is we can like, for example, create fire here. I guess we should because we're going to move in with this. So we'll have one shield. So yeah, I guess we get to sort of do something here. Create fire and throw away card. Don't care so much about the disarm in the next room. Okay. So for the Void Warden. It's a shame because normally we, we have stuff to do during uh, situations like this. But here we do not. I'm certainly not going to want this anytime soon. I'm not going to use it, even though it would create dark for me. I don't care that much about dark. And similarly, I guess we're not going to want this immediately. When we rush in, it's just going to be about damage, damage, damage as fast as possible. Kill the archers as quickly as possible, and then kill the, the boss as quickly as possible. So things like CC, like this bottom will be good, but not for a couple turns. So I think it's fine to just use this here. Okay. And so similarly for hatchet, what should we get rid of here? So if we create wind, then next turn we have like this attack, which I guess just gives us one experience plus a move three. And then this attack. Otherwise, if we create wind next turn when we go in, we can do, but we actually are supposed to be the one who opens the door. So doing this move plus this attack, I guess, makes sense for that reason. Mm. Yeah, then red guard can go in with this. Yeah. Oh, no, red guard wants to go in with this. I guess Redguard would have to go in with this then. Oh, we're just open the door. Oh, this is so awkward then. Because then what is the shield doing? What is it good for? Hmm. Do we just not get the check mark here for Hatchet again? Uh, I don't like it. I want Hatchet check marks. Hatchet modifier deck is so good. Regardless, I think it does make sense to do this here. All right, so hatchet first, we activate the favorite, gain two experience, and we do a move three, great win. Uh, we'll leave that to red guard, I guess. In which case, we needed to go different initiatives here. So like this, there we go. I mean, again, I can switch this stuff, there's no new on information. This is just a turn where we're all derping around. All right, so that allows red guard to go next. We create fire. This is just significant because Redguard's not moving and, and loots, so we want to get Redguard this coin. Because we care most about getting money to Redguard, basically. And we do nothing with our top action. We move, so we create a win. Sorry. Where are you? Uh, did you know what the other original... <laughs> yeah, you just need to tell that to a... Uh... to a famous Ru Russian author. And you should be good. All right, uh, so here we do absolutely nothing except move to here. All right. Okay, well, I guess we're the one opening this door, aren't we? So I guess the fire for this isn't really changing much, unless the monsters go after 24, which who knows. Uh, oh no, but it's not an issue after 24. It's because we, we want to actually make an attack. I mean, how likely is it that we actually get to attack something this turn? One, two, three, four. Actually, we really don't get to attack something this turn, do we? Oh no, we are ally gifted move. Oh, we were careless with cards, which card, with which cards we played. We actually wanted to keep Black Boon to let the Red Guard get up there. Well, so I guess it doesn't matter. We're not getting next to something, so we can just play this to throw it away. But then we're missing out on a move action next turn. So I guess we'll just play this to throw it away then. This gives us a better chance of tanking if they go after 40. Is the new update beta on Gloomhaven Digital already live? I have no idea. Uh, I think it was, I mean, I had heard Mental Request had said that it was supposed to go today, be out today, but I have no idea. Just to hope he doesn't jump. All right. Oh. See, that's weird. Oh, anyway. So, where will Hatchet be? Hatchet's move. I mean, we should be able to attack something with Gift of the Void here, I think. There's got to be the plan. So, we'll do this and this. Just have enough movement. 
because we may need to be one closer to the target than Hatchet, actually. Void Warden tank? No big deal. All right. Let's go. Press the button. Yeah, it's just frozen. Okay. No. Not like this. Oh, okay, there we go. All right. Well, we're making things a little bit harder for ourselves by uh, by having us open the door, but we'll, we'll try to make it work. So we're going to do a move three with the bottom center mass. So one. Okay. So we've got a flip for archers and for the boss. Well, they go after, so that's good. Although bonus attack is a bit painful. Just an attack. And thus the scenario starts harder. So this is basically... All right. So this scenario, the difficulty of this scenario, is directly proportional to the number of times that this boss performs this action. Special 2. <sighs> okay. So... We have two more movement. One, two. But we will use our boots to get one more movement. Going to here. And so our goal is basically going to be to kill this elite archer in two turns. Over the course of two turns. Oh, sorry, I should read the special rules. I don't think there's really any that are significant. Uh, so the doors can only be opened uh, by the boss. And whenever the boss performs a special one, he teleports to one of the doors and opens it. And then you activate whatever's in the room. And special two, he just summons skeletons, which is why this is really bad, because there's an infinite number of enemies that can be in the scenario for, based on the number of times he summons. Okay, so we used our boots, and now we consume the wind, gain one experience, and we get to make an attack three, range three, push two, targeting the elite archer. We're going to use the favorite tier and really pray that we do not miss. A miss here would be quite catastrophic. This makes sense because doing an attack six here and then follow up next turn or follow through next turn is an attack four. This is just this kills the archer in two turns. All right, uh, let's flip. Okay. <laughs> We'll take it. I couldn't use the goggles here. I have to, like I said, I can't long rest during the fight, and I need to save the goggles for the boss. <clears throat> okay. So then, we're done. I don't love our initiative next round, though, is the biggest issue. Doing this at 39, the archers are likely to go before us, but sort of is what it is. You could stand a potion here, but it doesn't really make sense, just for initiative. All right, so the boss, so the summoning rules are just a normal, right? What? It's elites for four? Or for three or four? Oh, this scenario is so imbalanced at three. God, why ever would I? So this is an elite bones that gets spawned every time he does this. Or summoned every time he does this. Put it on this side, I guess. I do hate this scenario. Okay, the Void Warden goes. We have a move four at the bottom of Resign Frenzy. One, two, three, four to here. We're going to do the top of Gift of the Void. So we create dark and we do a poison range three and one adjacent ally may perform attack three range four, targeting the thing. Enjoy your summon spell. Yeah, I know. I just. I really dislike the scenario. And you see, I've hated on some Gloomy of Digital scenarios, I've hated it on some Jaws of the Lion scenarios, and I'll fairly hate on any scenario that deserves to be hated on, and this is a bad scenario. Again, the difficulty is de entirely determined by the, the Monster Ability card deck. That's not a cool scenario. Okay, so we have some difficult choices here. We can target any of these three enemies with this. This would be good because we would just kill an enemy, right? Who is otherwise going to attack us for a lot of damage. The bad thing is then the favorite is stuck there. And the next turn we have a pretty crappy turn. We're just going to make an attack two on something. Which is not great. That being said, next turn, when we, if we plan on killing that with follow through. 
guess. Should I have stamina potion? No. 39 HP? Yeah, I know. I know. If we... Let's see. Yeah, we can never hit the boss with our stuff. Like, it's so likely, that not only will the archer go after us this round because we don't kill it, it will then probably go before us next round. So this is two rounds of the elite archer attacking. That's just too much damage. I don't care about being efficient with damage. We actually have to mitigate incoming. I suppose you aren't able to tell us your favorite gloomy scenario? Yeah, I absolutely can. I tell us all the time. I mean, it's sort of spoilery, but I guess I won't, I won't tell the name. Well, so my favorite scenarios are scenario 27 as well as 61. These are my two favorite scenarios off of the top of my head. In terms of... I like these because they're atypical scenarios. They're not the typical Gloomhaven rule scenarios. And I think they're well-balanced and fun. While being unique and interesting. Okay, yeah. So we've... It sucks because this poison is basically going to be wasted. I think we'll just take back Gift of the Void anyway, though. So we're going to make Hatchet suffer two damage. We're going to poison the Elite Archer here. And we're going to give Hatchet an attack on it. So the fire doesn't really matter here. Is it worth using it for a plus one here? So this is already an attack four with advantage. Basically the question is, do I care about one experience on the red guard that much? No, I care about beating this scenario. Especially with a start like this. So let's consume the fire using Master Influence. And that makes this an attack five with advantage targeting the elite bandit archer. Okay. And so the favorite is there, unfortunately. It's not going to be super easy to get to. All right. So next turn. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to stay on a potion here anyway. And I'm just going to get back Gift of the Void. This is just my best attack in this room by far. Who cares if my allies take damage? I inflict a ton of damage. and I need to get poison on the boss, so this is the best way. Okay. So then next up is the Red Guard. So Red Guard's just going to do a move four with the bottom of Flame Shroud and nothing else here. One, two, three, four to there. Okay. And then the Archer goes. There's only the regular Archer left. It's going to be attacking at plus one range one. So it makes an attack four targeting the Hatchet. No defensive items or anything like that. So it's just what it is. Wow. All right. That's good at least. Kind of balancing out the bad luck. I learned that late into my JLTL campaign not to throw my Hatchet into the back of a room. Yeah. It, it's definitely an important thing to know. Normally here we would be able to do boots to get it, but because we had to use our boots to get here. But, I mean, it was just necessary to do it here. If we hadn't done it, this would be attacking this turn, and we wouldn't necessarily be killing it quickly next turn either. So it can definitely suck, but sometimes it's just a sacrifice you have to make, and then after this we'll just have to try to figure out a way to go get it. Not coming. No, no, no. I, I know what you're talking about, because I've also been punished by this before as well. The real question is now whether we need to short rest on the hatchet so that we can actually make it to this this round and do something effective. No, I think this is fine. It's not great, but that... Basically, the reason why I think this is fine is because I think that plus this kills the, the regular archer, which sort of just makes sense then. Yeah, basically, I'm looking at this as sort of a, uh, killing this is an, a current me problem. Finding the hatchet again is a future me problem. <laughs> I'll let future me handle it. Yeah, this is just too good to pass up on, right? I can do both of these things here. Hatchet's going to move away from us beforehand, though. But maybe Red Guard will be near us? I guess we do actually need someone adjacent to us for this to work, then. Uh, can Red Guard go? Yeah, Red Guard can actually just move up to here, here. And that allows Red Guard to make an attack while being adjacent to us for, to make all this work. None of our initiatives here are great. But we do have good, reasonable turns, so I guess. All right, just uh, cross our fingers and pray is sort of the situation here, right? All right, so special one, that's fine. I don't mind seeing special ones, I don't care. So I just don't want to see special twos. And the archer, all right. 
The Bones is not moving. That's very fortunate. Archer's doing multi-target attacks, but at 56. Okay, wow. All right. Well, first turn was very unlucky. Second turn, we're turning it around. We're back in it. We're back in it. So Red Guard's up first. We're going to do the bottom of Healing Sands as a move three. We're going to go to... So we can go to here, here. So the boss is about to teleport over here, and this archer should be dead after this round. So basically, my targeting priority in this room is always the same. Archers first, then boss, then win the game. I mean, then clean everything else up, right? So, yeah. Accordingly, because this archer should die this round, there's no reason for me to want to be over here since the boss is about to teleport to the store and open it. Jump to the store and open it, I guess. I don't know if he has the ability to teleport. I'm not sure if he's that magical. Okay, so we're going to create light. All right. And we're going to do an attack three, range two, immobilize. So how do we want this to work? I guess this hit here. Yeah. And then when we command this to attack this and it takes the damage, that kills it. At the same time, if I command that to attack that, oh, it's range three anyway. Yeah, so it has to be that always. I guess I could do it the other way. I could also command this to attack this. And then this will suffer the damage. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that's actually even better. Okay, yeah, so he's magical. Hmm. He's just a bandit commander. But I guess he is a nefarious bandit commander. So we'll do an attack three on the regular archer. There's no misses. Oh, brutal. That's so bad. That's really unfortunate timing. Do his hands pulse with dark power? No, there's a dark otherworldly force in his eyes. Fair enough. Maybe he's teleporting. Maybe. All right, the archers immobilized. That doesn't matter because it's not going. It's not moving this round. All right, hatchet some next. So we're going to do an attack to range four with follow through, just attacking the regular bandit archer. All right. I thought things were going well for us this round. I couldn't goggles here again. I just, I never get to long rest, so I have to save the goggles for the turn I do the giant attack on the boss. I really needed this damage. Oh, God. Like, I needed one of these two attacks to connect on the bandit archer, right? To be able to kill it. And neither of them did any damage. That's pretty impressive. All right. We've got the bottom of retrieval's default move two. Here we go. Man. That is really rough. All right. Well, the room just got harder again. So, does that change what we do here? Does that make us want to do two attacks on the archer? I don't think so. I think I've got to get this poison on the boss right now. Oh, does it as well? He has dark on his hands as well? Oh, then, yeah, dark. Okay, his hands as well. All right, fair, fair. Yeah, he's, he's a teleporting. You're right. You're right, you're right. Can we make it to him next turn? Move three plus this from here. Yeah, we actually can. So I guess we don't have to poison the boss here. No, we don't have to poison the boss here. We can poison and wound the boss next turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. So that's fine then. All right. I don't love this. It would have really just been so much better if either of them had hit, but Void Warden's just going to have to clean up what their rest of our teammates are making mistakes up. My specialty. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the top of Gift of the Void. We're going to create dark, but we're going to consume that old dark, just to be clear, with when we do this, but uh, not yet. Or, I guess, do we care about the light on the Red Guard is the question, because we could consume twice. Are we going to care about the light? Next turn, we want to do what? Only so light would let us do that or get one shield well over here. We really want to create fire next turn though, so we can do this as soon as possible. So we're probably attacking with this. So I don't really care about light, do I? No, I don't. Okay, so that's cool. So we're creating a new dark with this. There's already the old dark though, to be clear, which we're gonna use. Um, I guess we'll use the old dark for this. Why not? So we're going to do the... What happens if this attack kills, though? That would be bad. No, it wouldn't. It would be fine. It would be fine. We could still make it work. It wouldn't be quite as good, but it would still be workable. Yeah, all right. So we poison the regular archer, and the red guard suffers two damage. 
and we consume the dark, so thus that uh, attack five with advantage is likely to kill. I actually don't really want this to kill. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yep, so it'll just be one less damage to the boss, but it'll do more damage more efficiently if we kill anyway, so yeah. So we'll consume the old dark with this attack. So this is an attack five with advantage targeting the bandit archer from the red guard. Love to get rid of a curse here. All right, well, we got the plus one, so that kills. Again, it's three base, plus one from Master Influence by consuming the Old Dark, plus one from the Poison, plus one from the Modifier. So six damage. You need the new Dark, same as the Old Dark. Yeah, that's run through my head many times before. <laughs> okay, so we're done with the top of Gift of the Void, and then we're going to use the... So we gain one experience. We're going to use the bottom of Turn Out the Lights. Force one enemy within range three to perform attack three, range three, targeting an enemy of your choice. The acting enemy suffers damage equal to the damage suffered by the target. So we're going to create ice with this. We're going to consume the light because of master influence. So this here, we're going to have the bandit commander attack the living bone. So this would be disadvantaged because of proximity on a ranged attack, but it's going to be advantaged because of master influence. So it's going to be neither advantage nor disadvantage. Uh, it does get plus one, so this is going to be an attack four on the Living Bones with the with our deck, not the monster deck. Could we? Is this? Uh, it's not a May. No. In addition, when you grant monsters attacks, they use your modifier deck. If only they may use your modifier deck, because I would actually use the monster deck right now, to be clear, uh, because of all the curses in my deck. Please be kind. That's so bad. Oh, this is just the worst curse. This is a really bad curse. This curse negated... So again, assuming a normal outcome, this curse essentially negated six damage, three of which would be to the boss, three of which would be to this. Wow, that's such a bad curse. Yeah, that's bad. Like I said, I would have used the monster deck there if I could have. Spam them. This has been a really bad turn, to be clear. In terms of, I mean, we got lucky with flips and very unlucky. I mean, lucky with ability card flips, extremely unlucky with uh, actual card flips. Okay, so the bandit archers are dead. The bandit commander goes here. And we need to flip for you. Okay, sure. Living corpses have one movement each. This one goes first, can't move. Then this one goes, and this one goes. Living bones... Oops, I teleported the wrong person over there, but sure enough. It, he's a commander, after all. He commanded the the bones to go open the door. The bones did not have movement, at least. Okay. So it's time to do this. We need to pick up the favorite before we can do the really big thing. Oops. Sure. Sure, it's fine to lose this. Don't really care that much. It's not one of my most important cards here. Uh, can you grant an attack with a Void Warden on a disarmed target? You can grant them an attack, but they can't perform it. So it depends what you're looking for. Sure. I don't need the wound. The Void Warden's going to apply it. All right, so what are we up to here? Oh yeah, like I said, we're gonna create fire so that next turn we can do this top on the boss. So what all do we need to do then? We need to move a bit, no matter what. The boss can be, there's a number of places the boss can be. Most likely he's gonna be here, here, or here. So we need, I guess three movement to be safe. Our initiative's not super important here this turn, so we can just yeah go ahead and use this again as usual. Yeah, that makes sense, and save a good initiative for next turn. Yep. I mean, we could use this here, but I, again, I, I don't... This is a turn where my initiative doesn't matter so much, so I'd rather take this opportunity to play a slightly worse initiative card. The mitigation on this isn't super significant anymore. Okay. Uh, so what are we up to? So we need to grab the, the favorite. So we don't, we can grab it with retrieval, but we don't have to because we're not going to use it for this attack no matter what. Because we want to make sure we have it next turn when we're going to do double throw plus power pitch. So what I really don't actually want him to do here, I guess, is to go open this. Because if he does, no, I guess if he teleports, he always does it late enough that we'll be able to hit him. So this should actually be fine no matter what. All right. 
So I'm just going to attack the boss here. So I guess I'm just going to attack him with this, and I'm just going to move and grab the favorite, which I can more or less do with any card. It might as well be, I guess, like this. I'm never using this again here. I guess it does three direct damage, but I'm more likely to want to use this for good initiative and just like plus one attack when I don't need to move. And again, just a default move here gets me to the favorite. I guess, unless the bones goes at... Oh, if the bone goes at 20 exactly, it would move on to the favorite. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's not be stupid. Let's not be stupid. Let's use this. If the bones were to go at 20, it would actually move to here, go right on top of the favorite, and then I wouldn't be able to get it by doing a default move here. So this is why I actually need to do the loot action. Even though I don't need... Typically, you do the loot action when you want to pick up the favorite before attacking. I don't need to do that here because I want to save the favorite for next turn. That being said, I don't... I'm never going to need... Well, it's going to be a while until I need to pick up the favorite before attacking again anyway. So there's, it's really just greedy to... It's stupidly greedy to not use uh, Retrieval. All right. Start round, please no special ones. Okay. Or sorry, speed zone special twos. Special one's fine. I mean, I'd like him to stop doing this as well, but I'd like him to just attack now. It's a lot to ask for though. Okay, so we have dark. So we're going to do the bottom of suggestion as a move three, consume dark. What are the corpses? Tell me they don't have a plus one movement here. Uh, oh, no, they're over here. I guess I should look at them. They do have plus one movement. Huh. But they go before him, so they won't reach me. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. So we're going to do a move three, consume dark. Going to here. One, two, three to here. We're going to curse one of the living corpses because he's immune to curse. On the plus side now, on the plus side now, you'll be able to get the chest. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid. I mean, the problem is he has 39 health, so I'm afraid he's going to open all four before I get to kill him. <laughs> That's more the issue. But a timely crit, you never know. Okay, and then we're going to use this top. We gain two experience. So we have to gain seven or fewer, right? Yeah, so we can gain one more. Okay. Create dark and a new ice. And we do an attack two, poison wound to curse stun. So unfortunately, curse and stun don't do anything, but poison and wound do. And an attack two, poison wound against this boss is worth it. This is the, our really only realistic way to get wound on him. And wound is obviously going to equate to a fair amount of damage. So I'm just going ham with my losses here. Oh, we yeah we yeah actually yeah so we, we well we've only played three losses I guess thus far. This in the beginning, and now we played two losses like this, but we'll probably play more. So we'll probably not make it under seven experience. All right, so here's our attack two. This I wouldn't have cared about drawing a curse on, to be clear. That's not an invitation. Oh, that's that's sort of like the worst thing. It's just to draw a negative modifier like that. That's not exactly the worst one, but... Because if I got a curse out of my deck, at least I get a curse out of my deck. And here, it's just an attack two. Getting a minus one, it still doesn't really deal any damage. How hard was it to import the JLT characters into the mod? Not hard at all. Um, I just used the, the thing that... <laughs> Blah McBlah linked and just use additive load and they you can just they auto set up and everything. They just, just a couple things they don't do, but otherwise they're fine. Not hard at all. And they have all the scripted stuff, so it's great. Alright, so we can just start by attacking. Again, I'm not using the favorite this turn, so it doesn't really matter. What is the bones up to, by the way? Plus one movement, sure. And how tired are you today from this extremely long stream last yesterday? I'm a bit tired today. But I mean, I'm going to do two scenarios. If I if I fail this one as my second scenario for the day, uh, obviously I'm not going to do it again here. But I'm, I mean, I'm doing two scenarios and that's it. I also, well, I wanted to stop a little bit early. I'm not sure that's actually going to happen. Um, because again, we have a friend coming over tomorrow, but pretty early. So we've got to get the apartment in order. Okay, so where are we going? Well, we're attacking first, sorry. So we're just going to make our attack three, range three with the top of center mass. Man. That's uh, some draws. Whatever. We're saving the good draws for... I mean, I'm going to say when it matters, but I mean, all I care about... If I get a crit on my big attack, I don't care about anything else. So this just ends up being three damage because of the poison. So you have five movement and three target attack. And the red guard also needs to move first. 
So, because I can stay here, or I can go here. I mean, there's a variety of places I can go. I guess... No, if he move, if he does his teleporty move, he's always going after my combo next turn. But I guess I don't mind getting further away from the corpses, realistically. So let's just go here. Oops. So we loot this, and we get the favorite back. So yeah, using the favorite here wasn't too costly, I think. I mean, I think it was definitely worth. We didn't get as punished as I have been in the past. Not here, but I mean, previously. Uh... Oh no, no, I'm definitely not doing that. I, I thought the red guard was going before the bones, but it's actually, he's not. Yeah, because we go there. Oh, it doesn't actually change anything, does it? It just means that it goes here. How much do I care about that? Reverse this is going here. I guess I'd rather have the red guard. No, it doesn't change anything. Hold on. Hole up. So if I go here, this is going here and attacking these two. If I stay here, then it's going here and attacking these two. I guess this keeps it a little bit further away, which is a positive. Does this change the Red Guard's movement as well? The Red Guard needs to be range 2 from the boss and has a move 3. So in order to do that, we can go here. I guess we could go here, which is advantageous if the thing goes here. Yeah, so actually, let's just stay here. This is going to be better. So we'll just stay there and do our move loot in place and pick up the things. Okay, so the Living Bones goes. It has plus 1 movement, so 5 movement. and attacks at minus 1, 3 targets. It can't get 3 targets, so it's going to be attacking for 2 and 2 targets here. 1, 2, 3, 4 to there. Attacks first the Hatchet, and then the Void Warden. 2 damage, take it. Ooh, 4 damage. Uh, we have no cards to lose, so take it. I mean, we have two. We would have to lose 2 cards in our discard. I would rather just try not to lose any more cards next turn than lose them here. Alright, unfortunate plus 2, but it is what it is. Their last attack was a miss, so I can't complain too much. Okay, so then the red guard goes. Red guard. We're going to do a move three. All attacks starting us this round of disadvantage. It doesn't matter at all. Nothing else is attacking. We go there. And then we use the top of flaming sickle. We create fire. And we make an attack three, range two, pull one, targeting the boss. So we're going to attack at the boss. <sighs> okay. I mean, I would much rather have that next turn, but doesn't just getting one this turn doesn't mean we can't get one next turn. We'll take that. Every crit counts. Rip, kind of brutal draw for the Void Warden. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Was pretty brutal. There's been a lot of brutal draws this far, but... Uh, even some, lose some. So this is 8 damage, so this is great. Because 3 plus 1 for the poison is 4, doubled 8. Beautiful. Alright, we're getting there. We are getting there. I totally heard Flamesicle there. I might have said Flamesicle. Flaming Sickle. We're calling it Flame Sickle from now on. It is what it is. All right. So this has two movement, but can only move one, one, one. The boss takes one from the wound. Opens here. And these should all be able to move up enough now. This is going to be something. This scenario. Why do I keep going down there? Okay. Another round. Well, we know what we're doing here. We've had this plan for a while. Our initiative is not great, but the boss can't teleport away early. If he summons, he summons. I'm just accepting that he summons one more time. Sorry, we're all dreamsicles. Have a flamesicle. Mmm, dreamsicle. Mmm. Leftover Thai food. Mmm. Oh man, we don't have any, any of our bottom attacks left? That's brutal. It's time for the boss killer. It is. It is indeed time for the boss killer. So, I could like get greedy and, for example, play this bottom to do one extra damage. I doubt one extra damage is going to matter, and I think better initiative is more likely to matter. I could also shield up. No, because Hatchet's closer to the enemies and is just going to get attacked anyway, so shielding up this round doesn't really matter. Um, so is it more likely I want... I mean, I guess it's more likely I want some shielding than moving. And it's not like, yeah, it's not like going that much earlier would really change much. I mean, I guess that's another point, but as a melee character, there's more that could change, and going getting the shield a little bit sooner could do something. My point is more like, it doesn't matter... For example, if I go at 10 or 6 here, it's not like we're killing the boss at that initiative. We're not killing the boss potentially until Hatchet goes anyway, so that doesn't change. But I don't think the one extra damage is worth having a 40 initiative here, um, is kind of my point. 
Also, this is an attack three afterwards that has some range, so. Okay, so short rest here. Um, hmm, I mean, the boss is already poisoned, but this is also my only really, rely what else do I have in here? Let's take a look at the rest of our cards quickly, and let's see if this is an acceptable loss. Because, for example, we still have Wicked Scratch, which is sort of better because our allies don't have to suffer damage. I guess we've got just a bunch of loss attacks that we can perform at this point. No, I guess it's fine to lose this now. The boss is poisoned. It's sort of insane to me to lose this, but I think here it makes sense. So how can we have good initiative and just mess the boss up? I mean, we have dark, so we should always be doing this. Can we get a good initiative on top then? That doesn't do much. Yeah, that top does nothing. Resign Frenzy right here. I guess just this, probably. I mean, that bottom loss is just way too good to pass up here. Right now while we can. But good initiative actually matters a lot here for the for the Void Warden. I mean, we're actually just going to get slammed by these if we don't move. Sadly, we can't give this to ourselves, can we? Hmm. A top move would be great here. So is it better to do a bottom move and to do a top granted attack and just not to play the loss? Hatchet might appreciate a strength. No, we, we've got goggles on the hatchet. We don't need that. We're ready. We're prepared for this exact instance. We gained 39 gold in the last scenario with hatchet just to buy these goggles and to be ready for scenario two. Um, I definitely don't want to do the strength then because, yeah, it's okay. Um, then again, I would have bat like 67, 68 initiative. The worst in Gloomhaven. Um, God, I actually do need to move. I can't take these hits. Like, killing the boss isn't the only thing. We do actually have to survive to kill all these enemies. <sighs> so I can't do this bottom attack, even though it is big. <sighs> How, all right, let's actually see the math. I guess this matters. The math does matter. So um, this is going to be an attack 10 doubled, so 20, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, an attack 20. And then here it's an attack 7, so 8 with advantage. That's 28. I mean, that's already the boss dead. So, yeah. We don't need to go crazy on playing this here. We should still probably play an attack of some sort, just to be safe. And just good initiative. So, like this and this here. Yep, this makes sense. Good initiative to run away before these things can hit us. If they come and mobilize muddle us, well, this would be unfortunate because then we'd be stuck there next turn. But that's the only thing that they can flip where they reach us before we get away. And even in that circumstance, they don't attack us and we can still try to CC them next round. Yeah, of course he would get one last turn summoning. <sighs> All right. Oh, that's so bad. But we didn't get it for two rounds. <sighs> one more elite bones, huh? One more elite bones. Yeah, that's, that's definitely not nothing. Oh yeah, I need these, by the way. Let's just make things easier for me. All right. The boss goes first. Takes one from his wound. These make them not drop coins. Okay, so what is what are the bones actually up to? Oh no. Don't have CC. Okay, okay, okay. That's not something you like to see. It's definitely not something you like to see. We're gonna have at least one shield. That's it. Time to use the healing potion. All right. Anywho, uh, nothing to it but to do it. So, yeah. Nice. I think we can summon marker is a new feature since I last played the mod. Yeah, it's, it is nice. So there was a lot of bad stuff here. The bones flipped the, the worst thing they could do, and the bandit commander flipped the worst thing he can do. But, yeah. All right, we're going to consume the fire. And we're going to gain two experience. And we're going to make an attack seven plus one for the poison. So attack eight with advantage, targeting the boss. Okay, at least it hits. Sure. So eight damage. And then we're just going to move in place and shield ourselves. We don't want to move away because um, the hatchet doesn't get to move this round. So it's pretty important that the bones focuses us. 
Oh, it's annoying. This way the living corpse is going to come get to hit us too. Because it dies. The boss is going to die and then the corpse moves up. But there's no real way around this, I think. Man, these flips are really rough. What's the corpse doing? He's poisoning us as well. Yeah, this is going to be a bad turn. This is going to be a bad turn. Oh, sorry. And then I'm using my healing potion. I'm getting poisoned. Oh. I mean, I'm getting poisoned after this. So is it worth just healing two now? Yeah, I think it's got to be. I'm not sure if I ever get to heal again, actually. We don't have the poison remover either. So, yep. We'll heal for two. Okay, Void Warden's up next. So, we shouldn't need to attack the boss here. Oh, I actually do have ice. Interesting. Most interesting. Hmm. So that changes some things, right? All right, so the boss... Let's look at it this way. How many curses are left in our deck? One? Yeah, there's one curse in our deck. Okay. So. Could also use that in eight target three. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely using this, to be clear. But here's the thing. Oh, this is lost, but let's just get that out of here. We'll see about this. So when we attack the boss here, yeah, we use the favorite. I mean, I could not use the favorite would be the joke if I have the Void Warden attack, but no, the Void Warden can do something so much better here. It's got to be worth using the favorite. I mean, it's going to be difficult to get it back after this, but so be it. Again, this is six doubled. So six plus favorite is nine, plus one for the poison, ten. I guess I don't know when this applies, if this is before or after the poison. Hmm, that's an interesting point, I suppose. Even if it's after the poison, it's fine. Even if it's after the poison, this would be an 18. I mean, before the poison. It's weird because some... I guess... Does this happen? I've got to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to go look at something. Because there's like a weird ability in Gloomhaven. That always makes me cautious about these doubling effects now. On a specific unlocked class. So I need to... I need to go look up something quickly. I mean... Some like General CGO probably already knows this, the answer to this question, the order in which this doubles. But I'm just I gotta check the wording on another thing because another thing has a weird way that it interacts with another ability in that class. Where is? Oh, there we go. Give me a second because this is really important. I want to make sure I don't make any rules mistakes here. I remember some things about Carve from Gloomhaven where doubled meant the value printed on the card. In this case, it would be 12. I believe it's the same wording as Smoke Bomb. All right. I'll compare Smoke Bomb with this other ability. Yeah, the, the thing printed on the card thing is what gets weird to me. Because I, So I've got to compare a bunch of rulings here. Or a bunch of wordings. All right. Let's grab Smoke Bomb while we're at it. And let's go right up this card and bring it over. All right, hold on. Sorry for the spoiler warnings here, but so this is double the next attack value this round, and this and smoke bomb is on your next attack while invisible, double the value of the attack. So double the value of the attack, and whereas this is Okay, yeah, I see. Yep, yeah, yeah, yep, makes sense. Okay. I was just wary of that one thing. Yeah, you're right. It is. It's like Smoke Bomb, not like the other thing. I just remembered with that thing the the weird ruling. I mean, not the weird ruling, the weird way it functions. But yeah, nope, good call. Okay. Uh, back in here you go. All right, so we're good. Back in there you go. Delete all of you. Okay, so... No, it is... It does work correctly here. It works in the order that we want it to be working. So it doubles the value of the attack, so it works with everything. Nice try there, little bulb. So yeah, we get the favorite, we get the poison. So this is a 20. So even at a minus 2, we kill, right? Technically, even if this was 18, a minus 2 would still kill because he would die to the wound. Um, which would actually even be the best for us because then the corpses wouldn't get to come. 
But, yeah, that other card makes double attack abilities more confusing. Yeah, it really does. I mean, that's why I actually originally misinterpreted the other card, because of how weird it is that that even exists, based off of the other things in the game. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 100%. So, we technically can miss, because we can draw a miss and a curse. That's extremely unlikely. I mean, it's 1 out of 16, 1 out of 15. Or 2 out of 16, 1 out of 15. Not, I'm not going to play around that. So accordingly, I don't need to damage that with the Void Warden to kill him. So the Void Warden can do whatever here. Still got a curse in George's deck. Yeah, we have one curse. So technically possible. Also gripe luck. I mean, this would be extreme gripe luck, right? What would be the... So... Sixteen equals two hundred forty, so three divided by two hundred and forty. Well, I guess it's not that small of a chance. It's one point three percent of the time this could happen. We have a one point three percent chance of this happening. I don't think I'm going to play around the one point three percent. To be clear. Okay, so accordingly, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the top of suggestion. So we're going to force one enemy within range because we have the ice. Force one enemy within range 4 to perform move 3 with you controlling the action, and attack 3 targeting an enemy of your choice adjacent to them. Also, to be clear, General CGO, this has a, um, a wording issue with the innate multi-target, right? Can we actually get, do we get the multi-target on the living bones since it says targeting an adjacent enemy? I, get, I understand that this is meant to be like, Because it needs some sort of wording for the fact that it targets other enemies. And, I mean, it's a melee attack, so obviously it targets adjacent. So can I actually multi-target with this? Because normally, what General CEO means is normally when I give an enemy that has multi-target an attack, it, if it has multi-target, it actually gets a multi-target. But here, because of the specific thing saying an adjacent enemy, I mean, I would guess that it would still function such that it targets here, but it has multi-target, so it also targets here. Yeah, I'm actually not sure either. Again, this is sort of an exception to the rule. Man, this has gone from a Gloomhaven stream to a rules stream. Ah, there's no FAQ either, is there? It's actually not insignificant because it's actually adding three more damage. I mean, I'm doing this no matter what, to be clear. This skeleton's always going here. There's a bunch of reasons for this. So first of all, using this skeleton is great because it stuns it, so it doesn't make a million attacks on me. I mean, it doesn't attack for nine, although really six because I have shield, but still. Um... In that case, do I need to use the poison here? Yeah, or the potion? Yeah, because I'm getting poisoned anyway. Also, it's going to actually block these from coming in, which I guess doesn't make, matter too much because I was going to get to move, but now I don't actually have to move, and it's just going to do extra damage. Gloomhaven streams are always rule streams, but a rules discussion is more Gloomhaven than actually playing Gloomhaven. It's true. I really wish there was an FAQ for Jaws. <sighs> Let's just assume we only get to attack one thing with it. Oh, also, we've failed our battle goal. Okay. I would think the intention was to allow multi-target. I think so, too, to be clear. I think that this is just specified because it has to tell you that it targets another enemy. I guess let's look at... Let's look at the wording of any of these other things. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, no, yeah, this this is the plural because it it has multiple attacks. Yeah. I, I think we're not allowed to... I don't. I, I agree with General CGO 100% here, actually. I think General CGO is completely right. I think the intention would be to allow multi-targeting, but because of the specificity of this, I think rules is written, you're actually not allowed to. So we'll we'll go with the... We'll be, we'll be harsh to ourselves here. I think that's fair. Again, to be clear to anyone who's watching this at home and is playing along, when in doubt... Isaac has always said this. A million times Isaac has said this. When, you're, when in doubt, when you don't know, just... Do what you want. Like, I mean, do what is best for you. Like, Isaac generally almost always will give you, will insist that the players should receive the benefit of the doubt. So it would be perfectly reasonable here for anyone watching this, like following along in the VOD or whatever, to just do this the way that would be most fun for you, which would be targeting multi. I prefer not to have any, like, asterisks on my beating scenarios. So that's why I'm, um, I'm going to do this as rules as written as possible, but you certainly don't have to. Okay, so we're going to gain two experience here. We're going to use suggestion as a loss. So we fail our battle goal. We'll flip that one over. 
Okay, so this Bones goes here and is going to attack number three, I guess. So we have, so we're going to consume the ice on this always. We can consume the dark as well. So the ice is going to be for the actual ability to stun the, the Bones. The dark is going to be to trigger Master Influence. So this is going to be an attack four with advantage targeting corpse number three. Here we go. Love to get a curse out of our deck. No, but that's fine. We'll take this. So we do six total damage. Beautiful. And then the bones get stunned, which is amazing because now he doesn't do his million attacks on us. And then, since we don't have to move anymore, I think it's different for a single granted attack like that. You mean a different wording? Uh, I don't think there's a single granted attack for something like Hostile Takeover. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, it's weird because they, to be clear, they do use their innate abilities on this. They just don't use, like, I guess, I mean, they still would pierce and poison and wound and curse and stun or disarm, whatever. They just, I mean, so there's just one thing, multi-target, that they don't use where they use everything else. I, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case. Um, okay, so now we get to strengthen someone since we don't have to move, so that's cool. Uh, we will actually strengthen the hatchet. I know hatchet has the goggles to use, but this just allows goggles hatchet to save goggles for later. Wait, actually, I checked it, and there's a lock class that uses the exact same wording, but I'm like 90% sure you're allowed to use multi-target with it. Okay. Well, in that case, we will multi-target. Let's have fun. So then the second attack here is going to be on this corpse. Okay, so this just does three damage. The reason for that is we only get to use this effect once per attack. The first attack performing each of your attack granting actions. Or once per action, I should say, not once per attack. One attack per action. All right, so we got three damage on the corpse then. Sure, thank you. Okay, I mean, this is active. Whatever, we know that we have one shield. All right, here comes the moment of truth. Let's not miss. 1.3%. So we gain one experience. We gain three experience here total. We double the value of our next attack. Lost. It's active, but whatever. And then we make an attack six, range three, plus the favorite, which we're throwing. I mean, do we actually need to throw the favorite, I guess is the question. Probably, right? Six plus one for the poison would be seven, so 14. Yeah, I don't want to let him go again. I would need to get a plus... One. No, let's throw the favorite. It's a real cost to throw the favorite here because it's going to be hard to get that thing back. But we got to make sure we kill him. Plus, it's not every day you get to do an attack 20. And we want to do an attack 20. All right. So, lost as well. And here it goes. We already have strengthened, so we don't need to use our goggles. Oh, God. I saw that first miss, and I was so sure what was coming next. Whew. Okay. Thank God for strengthen. So, in the end, we do 19. And the favorite is there. All right, the boss is dead. And we're done. So, now the corpses go. So, uh, yeah, this one actually can fight focus, so it does move up. And this one's going to go here, and this one actually technically can find focus as well. So this corpse here, oh man, I hate how they hoover up the favorite. Greedy bastards. All right. Because he doesn't actually have the favorite. The favorite's just on that hex. Like here. So the elite corpse is going to attack the... Red guard, it attacks for six, and then is going to poison afterwards. Curse? Okay. We'll take it, I guess. So six, there is five. We have one shield, so four. And this still hurts. Getting poisoned is also really rough because there's going to be a lot more attacks coming in this scenario, basically from these elite bones. Oops. And then the bones go. This one's stunned, and this one was just summoned this round, so it does not go. <sighs> okay, well, we got past the hardest part of the scenario, but we're far from out of the woods here. Two elite bone summons, just so insane. 
really is. Okay. I mean, I guess this is just one of those scenarios, right? Yeah, that's just way too good to pass up. So we can actually use Resign Frenzy top here. And it's great when you can use Resign, Resign Frenzy top as well, because it gives you good initiative on the top, which allows you to use a uh, bottom action with good initiative while still impacting combat. So here we're going to force all enemies within range 3 to perform attack 2, targeting enemies of your choice adjacent to them. Technically, everything in this scenario right now is within range three of us, except for this one corpse. So this is fine. This is still going to represent a total of, um, what? So this two, four, six. This actually gets to make both of its attacks. So 10, 12, 14, or 14. So 14 total attack. Yeah, we'll do a loss for 14 attack. And then we'll stun something afterwards. Since, again, we have the good initiative here, so why not? I don't really care so much about cursing myself anymore. So here... Since all these things are going to be doing all these attacks, oh, we don't want to muddle them is the annoying thing. Winnable? Maybe. Maybe. But I don't want to go so late. I mean, I guess going so late doesn't matter so much here. Maybe it's better to do something else this round then. I guess it's probably... I think it's... We've played a lot of losses here, so I don't want to be short resting early or anything like that. I still have my stamina potion, but I should use it when I have a smaller hand size. I mean, an odd hand size. And this just doesn't give us a good turn in any way. So I think we're just supposed to do this, and we'll just go later to not muddle. Oh, wait, the muddle is optional anyway. Muddle is optional. We can just not muddle. But at the same time, the muddle could still be useful later. And I think early initiative doesn't matter so much on us here. Uh, finally found a ruling about the Mind Thieves card that used the same wording. As specifically said, multi-target applies. Okay, thank you very much, General CGO. Appreciate that. Okay, so what are we up to? So we don't have any elements here. Um, mobilizing one of these things down here and then moving away seems pretty good, certainly. Which we can even do with this attack and then step back with sort of whatever we want. This already gives us better initiative than they can go with. Uh, I feel like I'm going to need crowd control, so I kind of want to keep this. I suppose... I'm going to create light here, and attack for a push next turn is fine, but so is, again, being able to mobilize. Maybe I just don't care about this right now, to be honest, because next turn, this does the same. Against these enemies, mobilizing and disarming is the same. The only difference is this is an attack three, whereas this is an attack two. So I think this makes sense, and we can do these two for to have good initiative. All right. Here we go. 21. They're not attacking. That is interesting. Certainly. Okay. Hmm. It's a lot to look at here. The bones, standard stuff. So, in that case, there's not really anything to be gained by immobilizing this because the other corpse is already going to make it up here and do immobilize um, uh, immobilize models. So immobilizing this really just accomplishes nothing. Accordingly, we should immobilize this, which actually uh, mitigates some number of incoming attacks. So let's use the top of Shocking Advance to make an attack three immobilize, targeting the elite living bones. Nothing special to use here. Okay, we'll take any damage we can get. So three damage. It's immobilized. And then we get to do the bottom of this is default move two. So now there's a real question of where we want to go to. We have to either move to here or to here. To here, we're not going to get all the muddles and immobilizes, which is interesting. But then this is going to get to come attack these two. No, I guess this is the thing the Void Warden can stun this turn, right? So, so there's just no incoming attacks. Yeah. So I guess there's no reason to let ourselves get... Uh, muddled and immobilized there when we can just go here. <laughs> the red guard running away, leaving the other two squishy people in front. Seems reasonable. They're like, uh, excuse me? Aren't you supposed to be back here? Okay. I think that makes sense, though. Just no reason to tank a muddle for nothing. I'm the backline. <laughs> yeah. 
you're more like you're the front line now and they're like uh, excuse okay so now these things go oh i guess it's gonna no this is just two movement right yeah it's only the elite that has plus one movement i mean plus one base yeah so yep yep this works so this goes here muddles and immobilizes that's a bit annoying i mean the, the muddle is more annoying than they mobilize to be clear this just goes here. Poor favorite, just getting left behind. Uh, this has two movements, so it can't move. This one can go our choice. It doesn't matter. One's always going here, and one's always going here. Actually, we also don't really care about the middle and mobilize much. So this is a pretty fortunate flip. Wow, can we actually beat this? Despite it summoning twice and opening doors twice. I mean, opening doors twice before we killed it was good, because we can get this. Summoning twice, much less good. Especially elite skeletons for three-player. Not extremely balanced. All right, well, the corpses are done, so that's good. Oh, uh, now this one got left behind, but we added one more down here, so it's actually the same. Man, it actually sucks that he didn't advance. I still don't understand why the doubling effect on that one lock cross only works on the mainline numbers. It's actually because of how it's worded. I can't, I don't want to spoil it, but you just have to read the wording and pay, pay, compare the wording between that and something like the double here or the double on. Is it, yes, it is written differently. <clears throat> okay, so we're up. We can do this first, obviously. So we're going to gain two experience, force all enemies within range three to perform attack two, targeting enemies of your choice adjacent to them. And the first attack performed in each of your attack granting actions gains advantage, and you may. So we want our first one to be the most significant. Sorry, I'm just going to blow my nose quickly. All right. Sorry about that. What the hell just happened there? So, where's the most important attack? Do we have an element? We don't actually have an element to consume, so there's just one of these will be advantaged. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, plus two here kills this. I guess I don't actually really want things dying, though. I don't know. There's way too much math that I'm going to have to think about to figure out, think this out. I suppose the most important of these attacks will probably be on the elite corpse, right? Because attacks onto the bones aren't very useful since they're just going to be attack twos anyway, which mostly sucks. And the regular corpses are pretty non-threatening. The elite corpse is reasonably threatening because two movement makes it much more likely to be able to keep up with us. Obviously, I'd rather be able to kill the bones, but attack twos just aren't useful on them. So, sure. Let's do the first attack. All right, so we'll first start with this thing attacking. Man, this is just going to be glorious. I love the Void Warden. Um, so this is going to be an attack two with advantage targeting the corpse. It's also going to get to attack the other corpse. Okay, so here we go. This one's with advantage. Ooh, okay. Nice. So that's four there. Would have loved to get rid of one of the curses in our deck. We have a bunch, but it is what it is. So now it's going to attack there. Okay. So that's done. Um, I mean, this can only attack these, so let's just do that. Uh, we'll go here and here in that order. Okay, one there. Curse. Oh, yeah, it'll get rid of them automatically for me. That's fine. Okay, so those are done. Ooh, Void Warden. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this is just an incredible loss turn. Especially not affected by our, these things at all. So this and this have gone. So all this can only attack there, so let's just go ahead and do that. Sure. Nice. Love the plus one there. Uh, this could attack here, here, but we definitely want to hit here. Like I said, attacking into some attack twos into something with one shield is not very good, so we'll attack here. Ah, okay. So that leaves just this and this to attack. So we'll just have them fight each other, fight to the death. Reside in frenzy is so fun to use. Oh yeah, it is. All right, so elite attacks here, regular attacks there. Ordering doesn't matter for this. Okay, one damage and one damage. In the end, not incredible, because we flipped two curses, and we attacked a little bit into shield, but I mean, it's definitely still good. Definitely still good, if we didn't have those damn curses in our deck. All right, so that's lost. And then we're going to do a stun, where we curse ourselves again. <laughs> if only we didn't have those damn curses in our deck. Let's get another curse in our deck. But obviously worth to stun this. 
Okay, done. Living bones go. This one's immobilized, can hit nothing. This one is stunned, can hit nothing. Hatchet. All right, well, we're definitely going to use the goggles here. This is the attack we want to use it on, and obviously mitigating the disadvantage on this. We can't move anyway, so this is fine. Add plus one to all your attacks this round, so this gives us attack two, target three, range three, muddle. Um, we can target adjacent to us or not. It doesn't change anything here because you can't get two instances of disadvantage. I guess there's a chance of killing this. Not very high with our deck. Um, I suppose we'll just hit... Oh, so we lost this and this. We're also going to lose this and this here. I think I'll just hit... I mean, again, attack twos on things with shield doesn't make a lot of sense. At the same time, muddle against them could be very useful. How likely is it that we CC them next turn? Uh, the bottom bones is always getting immobilized, and the top bones... Yeah, is also getting disarmed. So actually, we'll CC the bones. So sure, yeah, let's just hit the corpses then. Just do max damage. So we'll do one, three, four in that order. Okay, so two damage, three damage, and a miss. Oh, three damage here. Nice. That's where we wanted it most. We actually picked correct ordering for once. Beautiful. All right, so this elite corpse is muddled, and this back thing's muddled. That's very unlikely to matter. Okay. And that's the end of the round. Beautiful. So, yeah, we'll do this and this. I guess the argument is I could just use this, because I'd rather probably keep this. Yeah, that's actually a reasonable argument for random losses on a short rest, right? Void Ward's not going to have a lot of turns left. Ooh, we have really bad initiative here. I guess there's only one corpse next to us. So there's... How many cards did they flip this far? So they're 1 in 5 to get the 32, which would be very bad here. I guess in that case we'd be forced to just like pivot or disarm. Yeah. Also sucks that we're never getting the favorite back here, to be clear. All right, so here we just need to go as early as possible to do the disarm. We want to disarm this, because this will be immobilized, this will be disarmed. We're just mitigating the two most significant attackers. We're not doing a lot of damage this round, but we're at the end of our rest cycle, so it makes sense that we're a little bit less flexible. We could use this, because being able to move the hatchet would be useful, but we can't, we can't do that and the top disarm, so it never really works. So we just have to hope that these don't do the 32. Please not the 32, please not the 32, please not the 32. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Oh, that's so bad. I mean, if these had at least done one of their turns where they don't attack, which is actually kind of crazy. Is, is that the beginning? No. I guess, yeah, the not move. They've already flipped. The not attack where they heal. Although that's actually going to get hard. Oh, God, that's so brutal. The 32 is just so bad here. That's the only card that actually really matters that they could have done here. Because now the hatchet is actually going after that at 35. So we're going to have to disarm that. Brutal. Really brutal. Alright, well, red guard's up first. We're just going to have to let this bones have its way. Let's see what we can do. Do we have our boots still? No, we don't. Damn. Maybe should have stayed with a potion to have better initiative. I don't know. At the same time, it's a 1 out of 5. It's just a really unfortunate 1 out of 5. Alright, so we're going to do disarm range 3. No, sorry. We're going to do uh, attack 3 range 2 immobilize, targeting the elite bones down there. Okay, nice. Plus ones down here is good. These things are really difficult for us to kill with our limited damage in this party. And we create light, and then we just have a default move two, which there's no reason to do. Yep. So we're good. Okay, so we are going to do disarm, range three, force target four, move one. Um, there's no real reason to make this move. Hmm, to the best of my knowledge. I don't think it'll change anything to move it. <clears throat> trying to think here. It depends where we're going to go. So we have a... You know, we have our boots. So we have a move three, and the hatchet is then eventually going to do a move two. So how will that work? It's actually a move to push to. So if we move here, we push this. So the Void Worm's just going to have to tank the Skeleton. Hmm. Nah, just lose a card. Losing another card seems very reasonable. How many cards will we have left then? 
If we lose the last card in our hand, we'll have two turns left. We really can't do that. Apparently. Apparently they come in threes, apparently. Yeah, just referring to some spam bots. Man, this is so uh, is there a world in which we can push the bones so far back that it doesn't... No, we don't have wind. It has three movement, so it should always be able to reach us, even if we go over here. Yeah, it can always reach someone. Man, it's so brutal, this 32. Being forced to disarm this is just so bad. I guess we just... I know, but it's plus one attack, so even hitting the hatchet here hits for four. Can we count on getting a plus a minus one? Probably not. Hatchet. The problem is, I guess we could just stamina potion a card to lose on the hatchet. That's probably more reasonable than losing cards on the Void Warden here, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do. Okay. So I don't believe there's anything to be gained by moving this, to be clear. So I'm just going to leave it where it is and disarm it. And then I'm going to do a default move two on the Void Warden. And I'm going to go to here. And this allows the hatchet to move to here, I suppose, to block this from hitting multiple targets, which seems all right. Which seems all right. Yep. And we can almost hope for a minus one. You never know. Okay, so we're done. So the living corpses go. God, I still can't believe that draw. I mean, the good thing is that they suffer damage. I'd love them to do their thing where they move without attacking and suffer damage. That would be sweet. We'll take every point of damage we can get. All right, so hatchet's up next. Yeah. We have nothing special we can do to stop what the bad thing. I mean, I guess technically we can stop the bad thing by playing a loss, but that's not really any better. I guess we would immobilize these for next round. Hmm. If we're gonna have to, if we're counting on losing a card anyway, the difference is if we do this, then we have to make an attack two instead of an attack three. But we would have mobilized some enemies for next round. I'm not sure how relevant those mobilizes are, but they actually that's probably worth having one less attack. Actually, okay, okay. Oh, huh. we're gonna use stopping power bottom. Fair enough. We won't have anything to do with the win, but that's fine. We're also not gonna have a ton of cards left after this, right? Yeah, we're gonna have. Jeez, I'm not sure we're gonna beat this scenario actually. It's a lot of beef to get through. Summoning a leaps bones is just insane. And this this flip this turn was really bad. Having to lose a card here costs a lot. Okay, so in this case, I guess we just attack first. I really need to kill the things down here so that I can get to that. No, I guess I want to attack the elite. Okay, so let's do a move three jump, gain one experience, create wind. Mobilize target all enemies adjacent to any hex you enter during the movement. So we're going to go one, two, three. Which immobilizes this, this, and this. And then we're going to do attack two, range four, and we're going to attack the elite corpse here. Come on. Uh, our draws have been so mediocre. Just If we keep drawing like small negative modifiers like this, we're never dealing damage. All right, we're done. So this and this lose their mobilize. The pain of having very few perks, well, having zero perks, but yes. Short rest. I can't lose my gifted attack, I guess, at this point. So yeah, I have to lose this. Oh, I didn't put the loss where it belongs. There it goes. Mm. I mean, it, it doesn't look like I'm close to getting to the favorite, and the multi-target attack three, two here is pretty good. So yeah, I guess that's fine to lose. I would rather lose follow through, but I guess keeping my multi-target combo here seems reasonable. I don't know. We're not. I don't know. It doesn't actually like. I feel like this scenario went about as well as it could. Well, in terms, no, I mean we flipped very badly with our modif pretty badly with our modifiers, and this boss did summon two elite bones. It seems like this is actually pretty just insane. The fact that for a three-player party, the boss summons elite bones, and I mean at plus two, it just seems like there's just not enough longevity. Like we had to play losses to get ahead. It seems very difficult to imagine how we 
how we kill them. I mean, the red guard does have a lot of turns left, so it's just going to be like red guard and hopefully just a couple enemies left at the end. All right, anyway, so, because, yeah, we've got three turns left on, no, I guess we have four turns left on Hatchet, three turns left on, on Void Warden. Okay, so what I want to do here, I really need to create fire to be able to do this next turn. It was brutal to lose this, because this would actually be a great opportunity to create light and fire, and then be able to do the, the full shebang, but I couldn't run the risk of re-rolling. There are too many cards. Like, I mean, if I if I re-rolled and I lose this, it's bad. If I lose this, it's bad. If I lose this, it's bad. I guess those are the only things, but that's still too many things. And we also just need to keep our range tax for when there's just going to be corpses left. So yeah, this makes sense. With this, we can always shield up before we're going to, because we need to move up. I guess we don't actually have to move up. Can we do something else on bottom since we don't have to move? Not really. So no, I guess we're just going to move up. Well, or, or do some, some sort of a move. Oh yeah, no, we want to move up because we need to be adjacent to this. So the Void Warden can gift us an attack. Enhancement ideas for Red Guard. Add fire to move three light. Yeah, no kidding. It wouldn't be bad. That's that's like setting up an uh, enhanced leaving cleave. Uh, so we have boots there. So if we go at 16, because we need to be next to this so we can be given the granted attack. To try to kill it. Because killing the bones is really important. Issue is initiative. I guess I just accept that it attacks once. Or, I guess, no, this makes more sense then. I'll just use this here. We'll just move up with that. It's losing our big move. We still got to move three. And this allows us to do exactly what we want to do here, which is this and this. The reason for this being with a default move, because basically, so we need the red guard to go here. We don't want to go here because this is immobilized. We don't want to go next to it. So we're going to go here, and then we need the void warden to be in range. But the void warden needs to be in range too of the red guard to get this attack. Because obviously the hatch is not going to be adjacent to anything. So the red void warden can do use boots, go here, get this coin, and gift an attack on this. Yeah, plus I noticed that their only non-lost bottom fire generators are non-movement abilities. Which is fine. Like, I think that's good. I generally prefer in Gloomhaven from a design perspective, um, let me turn all light in here, that classes create elements by doing things, not just by moving. Moving is very uninteresting. It, it's just, it's very free. And I think it's, it's definitely cooler when classes are balanced around creating elements by doing actual actions, not moving. That being said, having one move with an element is kind of okay, because that allows you obviously to have at least a guaranteed way of creating your two elements. Okay, so this works. Starts around. So now I really don't want the bones to heal themselves. Okay, that's fine. And you, minus one movement. All right, that's good. True, but it's so nice to have some way of moving and setting up fire. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. I, I mean, I understand from a play perspective, I definitely like to have it, for sure. But that's also why I think from a design perspective, it's not great. Is because it just ends up being so free. All right, so let's start by using Flaming Sickle. Oh, we actually don't have to move around with the Void Warden because we can just pull him next to us, huh? Yeah, pull does something. Pull does something. Okay, so let's just attack the elite living bones with Flaming Sickle. We're going to create fire. And draw attack modifier. Minus one. Beautiful. So we do one damage. All right, well, the next attack should still kill. And we'll pull him to here, I suppose. Okay. And... I guess then we didn't need to move anywhere, but we do need to stay next to him, so I guess I can move. No, there's no real reason to do that. No, yeah, and I, I need to be within range too. Nope, so we'll just stay here. All right, Hatchet's up next. So, Hatchet goes. We're going to do the fancy hat combo, plus one to all our attacks this round, and we'd use Disorienting Barrage. So, pull does something? I know, right? It actually did. I mean, to be clear, pull was amazing in the first room, but it's pretty rare that it does something outside of like very specific situations like that. But here, I mean, basically what it did here was saved us using our boots, but that's not nothing. Who knows? 
and lets the Void Warden stay in a slightly better spot in the center of the room. <sighs> Are we ever getting this chest? I guess we'll see. So, add plus one to all our attacks. We get to do attack two, range three, target three, muddle. Um, again, the attack twos on this bones just sucks. I'd rather try to save big attacks for that. I don't even know what those are going to be at this point. I guess we'll try to get the favorite before the scenario ends. So we're just going to attack the corpses again. So corpse one, corpse four, and corpse six. And we're, we're counting basically on the red guard killing here, which is why we're not going to muddle this, which theoretically would be useful. We're going to get to make an attack four with advantage with the red guard. Uh, I think generally I should be able to count on that killing. Okay. So, and I kind of, I mean, I, I can't be, I have to be reasonably greedy here because I need to deal so much damage still. Probably want to get muddle on those bones though, right? Oh, there's still this bones. I forgot about him. Yeah, I, I was even thinking about that last turn. For some reason, I just completely forgot that he was alive. Yeah, so I do need to get muddle on this bones. Not this bones, but yeah, good call. Good call, good call. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to hit here, here, and here. Here and here because I want to try to clear my way down to getting the favorite. And here because you're right, this is going to come attack me. I just forgot about this one. I don't know why I forgot about this one. I'm just so focused on this one down here. So we'll do one, four, two. Okay, that's really good. So he's just dead. Four. One damage and two. All right. I guess I would have rather had the crit here, but that's just about as good to be honest. Um, and you never notice that on the GLTL box, all the money is on the hatchet side of the table. <laughs> it is indeed a preview of what gameplay with hatchet is like. All right, so model goes there. OK, um, we don't stamina potion yet. So Void Warden's up next. Uh, now throwing out some curse is definitely not worth. So we're going to gain one experience. So much for not gaining that much experience, huh? We're going to create dark. We're going to consume one of these two elements. doesn't matter which one. Wind. Why not? So, and grant an attack four with advantage to red guard attacking the bones. Please. Oh, God. <laughs> so bad. Oh, God. That's so bad. Man, our modifier flips have been so brutal. Yeah, you're right, General Sergio. All right, well, not muddling this one is going to be a little bit costly, but it, it's still, I mean, it made sense to count on a plus zero with an advantaged attack, to be clear. This is just extremely unlucky. Not the sort of thing we should play around. All right, so this one goes here, attacks there with disadvantage. All right, that's nice at least, and this one attacks here. Minus one, well... That's, that's fortunate. It's guess everyone's just having trouble hitting. So it attacks normally for three poison, but minus one, so we take three. Damage hurts, though. Living corpses have no movement. Please, before you flip the reshuffle. So they have two 60, 66 reshuffles or something like that. And then they've got the one where they move and take damage. I really need them to do the thing where they move and take damage, to be clear. Well, unfortunately, our multi-target thing that we set up doesn't really pan out, huh? Because there's actually just nothing next to each other except for over here, which we just can't go to. Even if we had the move four here. I mean, we could with a loss, but that would be a bit insane. All right. Uh, I mean, we're playing these two cards. Not going to do anything great with it, but... Obviously, we just have to play the cards that we have. Same thing here. So the real question is, could we? how greedy could we be here? What do Bones have left? Oh, no. So Bones have two cards left, and either they're doing the thing where they don't attack, or they're attacking at 20 and healing. So we need to kill the Bones before it attacks and heals. Play this, then, is the question. Yeah, both of the shuffle seal. Yep. And it's hilarious, actually, how much of the decks we've gone through in both these. These have both their shuffles left, and these two of their three cards are shuffles. This one. Basically, the question is, so we have one curse left in our deck. 
do I need to play this bottom to be 100% sure to kill? And this top. What sucks about this is I'm sort of doing nothing for the turn with one of my two actions, but this actually has to make sense. This is the only way I can be sure that this bones 100% dies. Because if I go, for example, with even other, some other top of like 16 or 32, well, 32 actually they 100% go before me. So 10, I go before them 100% of the time. The sunglasses null is a great emote. Agreed. Um, yeah. So this is just the thing we've got to do here. It sucks because what I'd like to do is just make a top attack, for example, with this, and then be able to move or something on bottom. But if we miss, or we flip the minus two, the minus two might already be drawn, but yeah, minus two, of course, is already been drawn. Still, we can flip a minus. We, we have two misses, essentially, in our deck. All right, and for here, I don't know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do some things. Probably do some healing. All right, they went at 20, so we could have gone at 16, but and the living corpses, of course, aren't suffering damage before going. Uh, all right, red guards up first. Is there any reason to attack here? Yeah, because if we kill it, then we get to move afterwards. Is there any world in which I want to move? Of course, this is. Of course, this actually gets the shuffle where it heals and does attack. That's so bad too. No, there's no world in which we can like do anything to prevent this from just attacking here. Okay, so. Is moving helpful in any way? I don't want to move towards this because there's one movement. This so none of the corpses are going to get to attack right now, so it doesn't really make sense to move towards any of them. So no, I guess there's no real reason to do anything but just play the bottom here. I don't want to play the top. Well, I have a curse in my deck. If I draw a reshuffle here, it's really bad because I'd like to keep all these cards out of my deck. <sighs> That's so frustrating. I'm just having such bad turns. Sure, great light. Do one direct damage to all the adjacent enemies. This is dead. Man, just failing to kill this last turn was so costly. And we're done. All right, the bones go. This one heals, which is so brutal. Fuck, elite bones summoning on three players. That is not great balance, in all fairness. All right. Oh, my God. Well, that's the end of the scenario. We're done. Wrap it up. I mean... Oh, yeah, it is loot one. You're not wrong. Good call. That just lost us three turns on the hatchet, to be clear. Three turns because of that plus one. So to begin with, this is a 50-50 that it even attacks, right? And then after the 50-50 that it attacks, it has five, seven modifiers in its deck where we have to lose a card. Otherwise, we take three damage and we're fine. So we get 50% of a... I mean, this isn't enormously small, right? Uh, why am I even calculating this? So it's 17.5% that what would happen here happens. <sighs> this is so costly. We literally lose three turns on one of our characters because of this. Uh, no, it's not quite a one in four. It's 17.5%. or 18, 17.5%. of the time this should happen. So it's a little bit under one out of five times. But it's it's like that combined with like the fact that we didn't kill this thing last turn. God, it's so bad. Yeah, so the hatchet has no turns left now, unfortunately. It doesn't matter which cards we choose to lose. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't think we win. I think that that does decide the scenario. I hate this scenario so much. God, I'm going to have to freaking do this scenario again. I really hate this stupid scenario. <sighs> I really hate this scenario. Oh, yeah, Hatchet can still attack. You're not wrong. Yeah, we saw that. Sorry. Just play this one plus one. Normally I would. I just wanted to, I don't know, do the thing. All right, yeah, Hatchet still gets its turn. So, what's that going to be? Just an attack... If we had some sort of loss, that'd be nice. Now we get to make an attack too, we can push something, and we can do some looting. Well, we're going to do some looting, I guess. Alright, um, what does it make sense to attack? This does have... Yeah, that's... Okay. So, sure, let's attack the corpse down here. 
with our attack 2 range 4. To the bitter end. Incredible. Just incredible. Alright, we're doing move 1, loot 1. Including this and this. Okay. Um, tech. No, if I actually if I stand on pushing a card back to lose it to negate, it doesn't actually make sense. I mean, because like, then I can't can't long rest here. I can at least tank a hit. Okay. Um. So next up is the Void Warden. Oh, I didn't want to move down there because then this gets to hit me for nothing. So I guess I don't get those coins. Oopsies. I forgot about. I forgot there are still these stupid corpses in this scenario. Feels like having just one perk would make such a huge difference in the scenario. It feels like the scenario shouldn't have had a starting condition that you have to add three curses to your deck. Given, again, the, I mean, I've talked about that at length, but obviously. Um, okay, so whatever, let's just... So playing a loss here costs us one turn. Yeah, costs us one turn. I think it's worth playing a loss to actually get to make an attack here at the cost of one turn. So... We're going to first use, I guess the ordering doesn't matter too much. Actually, very slightly does. All right, we're going to use the bottom of Lure of the Void. One ally within range three and we perform attack five. So we're going to consume the dark. We're also going to consume the fire for this because of master influence. We're going to gain two experience. And we're going to allow the hatchet to perform an attack seven plus one because the element for master influence. So attack eight with advantage targeting the elite living bones here even if i even though killing this gets me hit i don't care i obviously would be super happy to actually get to kill this so here we get an attack eight with advantage and the hatchet's going to suffer two damage all right here we go thank god finally all right well that makes a big difference now we've just got corpses left so red guard may be able to do this by himself okay and then we're going to use the top of black boon to heal the hatchet and poison him. Because obviously doing this the Red Guard would do literally nothing. Uh, if you're planning on healing with Black Boon, doesn't it make too much of a difference if the hatchet looted, right? Um, it does, theoretically. Because now the hatchet can tank two corpses. Yep, exactly. The hatchet can tank this corpse for an additional turn. Which is something. I mean, I don't know. Every small bit feels like it could make a difference in this scenario. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to greed. <laughs> Definitely not going to greed at this point. Alright, so you move up. You go here, you go here. I guess we can choose where you go, but yeah, I'd rather have you go here. I guess I'll just get this off the map. This doesn't matter anymore. I'd rather have you go here. Okay, so this one gets to attack the hatchet, plus one. All right, so it attacks for four normally, plus one from the poison, plus one from the modifiers, six. Impressive. But that's fine, as long as it wasn't a plus two or crit. Okay, so now we long rest on the hatchet, which just allows us to tank one more of these attacks. Red Guard can make its way to the treasure. I mean, he we're definitely going to get the treasure one way or another. I guess I shouldn't say definitely. Um, yeah, I'll just short resting here. I guess I, I should take a look quick. Well, I mean, whatever. let's pull the card for the short rest and see what we get. Uh, I definitely don't care about that. I just need to have granted attack at this point. Initiative is less significant. For our last turn, we just have to deal damage. Maybe this scenario is balanced at plus zero difficulty. Again, well, I mean, sort of, right? But, all right. Again, that wouldn't make so much sense because the last scenario we did at plus two difficulty and it wasn't even close. We won with a million turns of margin, right? So it wouldn't make sense that, so that would mean if we did last scenario at plus zero, it would be even more of a joke. Therefore, um, it doesn't really make sense that two scenarios back to back, like the first two scenarios, should be would be balanced very difficultly in, in terms of in terms of overall balance. But again, the the biggest thing to me is just that the scenario is just highly luck dependent. Again, if the boss had summoned one less living uh, bones, if he just attacked for one round, for example, this would be easier. Even if he'd opened one more door, this would still be easier than summoning a living bones. Again, the the scenario is just directly dependent on how many times the boss summons living bones. Okay, um, it's annoying that we can't easily kill here. I 
I guess disarming one makes sense here. Yeah, we'll do this and this, I think. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Playing on plus two with such low level characters, it is costly. There's no doubt about it. I guess disarming doesn't work that well here, does it? I mean, I suppose I'm always playing these two cards anyway. I don't need three movement. <laughs> because disarming this doesn't really do... I mean, it might do something. We'll see. It, it can do something. And also multi-targeting can theoretically do something. I'm not sure which one will actually do something. So let's just see. Let's start the round and find out. Sure would be nice for them to suffer damage a little bit more, though. All right, so... This poison on the red guard also hurts a lot. Okay. We don't really want to go next to this, because we'd rather this just get attacked, right? We'd rather Hatchet get attacked. And we can even gift the Hatchet's attack here. So there's really no reason to go next to a corpse here. But I guess for that same reason, we could just do the, the disarm. Hmm. Yeah, like, we could go here, but then we're making a disadvantage attack here. We're never killing this with a disadvantage attack, too, on something with three health. So there's not really a good place to go here. I guess I should have played the attack, the, um, the other card, because the move three here would at least get me to this. Although I need to stay in this room a bit longer, so I'm not sure that really made that much sense. Uh, so disarming this or not disarming this, again, it doesn't change anything. Well, yeah, I guess it lets us move up rather than move back, so that's still better. So we'll create these two elements, and we'll make an attack to, we can attack already before we move, plus one. Ugh, all right. And then we have a move to jump. We can't go next to you, so it's here or here. I think here is probably better. I need to kill them before I worry about getting at the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six. From here, we can get it with this if we kill from the spot. Okay, so we're up next here. We're going to do, uh, I guess, hold on. We can actually decide where we're going to go because we can move one of them, right? Um, We need to look at the decks. Now, our deck is it's definitely better to draw from our deck, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, no, because then we have to go there. This way we could be a little bit further. So actually, this is fine then. So we'll go there, because then we can actually speed the Red Guard on his way. Next turn, Red Guard can make a ranged attack and then move to the chest. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine, this is fine. Okay, yeah, so we'll go there. This works. All right, Disarm goes here. So next up, we're going to use Wicked Scratch. <laughs> Jesus, look at that experience gain. 14. So we'll start by using the top of Wicked Scratch. Game one experience will consume the light to allow the hatchet to make an attack four with advantage targeting the adjacent corpse. Love to kill here. Love to kill. Okay. Ugh, all of them at one. I mean, them being at one is significant because now they have two flips in their deck that kills them. So this is still very good. Okay, and then we're going to move two and then one ally within range. So we're going to perform move two. So I don't think we want to move anywhere. I don't mind just hanging out here. There's nothing I can... I mean, I guess I can go here. But I don't want to get hit. I mean, I, it would give me a coin. No. Because I could like waste their turn for a turn still. Like, draw one of them over here, which just gives us more time for them to flip the thing where they take damage. So I think I just stay where I am. I could move one further away. But it doesn't matter if they hit me next turn or not. It's exactly the same. Corpse is getting bodied. Yeah, sort of. And nice one. So Red Guard then gets to perform a move too, going to there. Okay. Add quote. This is fine. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair quote to add. All right. So this one comes to here, which is actually good for me. It's just a move two we get to perform anyway. Yep. I don't know what the extra command is. Sorry. This one goes to here, and this one attacks the hatchet. All right. Whether we lose the two cards or not, it doesn't change anything because we're out of here at the end of the round. We're out of here. All right. Hmm. Down to the wire. At least this will have been an exciting end, no matter what. Okay, so here it's a short rest. I mean, we do have a ton of turns left on Red Guard. I think we should be able to win this. Yeah, okay. I also just don't want to take damage, right? Not that 
the amount of health we're at here is really likely to change anything, but... Okay, so we need to go before 21, we need to hit this, and we need to do a move 3. While we're moving back up, I probably want to keep the healing, so I'd like to do some other move 3. I guess the move 4 is fine, but the move 4 is also good for moving back up. But then we don't have any other movement. Since you have a card in hand, could also long rest or remove poison. Uh, no, definitely not worth letting this potentially hit me. Definitely not worth it. Oh, sorry, I, got the, I didn't know you were there. No, no, no. We can get rid of poison while we move back up. That's definitely not definitely not what we want to do here. Okay, so we attack with this, and I guess we move with this. So the real question is, what's more important? Having the ability to remove the poison while we run back up by using this, or keeping a move four is basically the question, because we need to use one of these two cards here. Theoretically, I'm not in a hurry to get back to them. But removing the poison doesn't do very much. I mean, I guess it lets me heal then afterwards. Yeah, that's probably better. I can take some time moving up. I've got turns, actually. It's funny how... I mean, we just didn't play any losses here. It's the difference between playing losses and not. All right. Um, yeah, so we're long resting here. I guess I have to click long resting every time. Even though he's not. Okay. Well, the corpses are never going to suffer one damage, apparently. Which is a shame. We're going to make an attack 3 on this corpse here. Okay, drawing a minus 1 is great. Gets that out of our deck. Kills you. And then we do this as a move 4. Make it to here. So we're about to spoil chest number 67. Fair warning, chest number 67. Do I have any takers? Chest number 67. Shouldn't have to. Oh, really? I don't? Oh, okay. This is when we frost even test that we have to. Okay, if I set his health to zero... And just put him there? Okay, thank you. So, chest 67, last warning. Time to spoil it. We get 10 gold! I mean, at least it's 10 gold on the red guard. Man, it's. Sh I mean, I guess it's good that this chest is so boring because it's so not. It's so easy to just not get it, but it also kind of sucks that you feel like you do a lot of work to go get this and then get this. Yikes. Okay. So we're done. So then, uh, this its focus is there. It can't move. This one goes here and hits. Doesn't really matter what it draws. Sure. I didn't remember. No, it, it's been so long. I don't. I think the last campaign I played through, I didn't actually get this chest. It's just been a long time since I've gotten the chest. Void Warden out. I will never forget our spell. We were riding the wind to snatch the chest from the scoundrel. <laughs> that is a classic. All right. So it doesn't really matter which one of these we perform for now. We're always using this top and just slowly making our way back up there because we're just we want them to flip a one damage. So I'm not forced to attack that one. I only have to attack the other. I guess I'll keep, yeah, this and this. No reason to... Uh, initiative this round doesn't matter. After this, it will matter, but... All right, here we go. Uh, so I set the Void Warden's health to zero. And... Oh, I guess I have to set it down here. So it's got to be like this. Okay, there we go. I have to do it down there, not just on the Sandy. Okay, got it. It's very easy to get that chest. I think I've... Uh, to knock it out, yep. And you gotta play out the whole base game with the Jaws characters, like all 51 scenarios. No, I'm not gonna play the whole base game. I'm just gonna play for a while, getting them to level 9, and then playing with them. I mean, I'm gonna play them up to level 9, and play them a little bit level 9. And then I'm going to probably do a continuation of the campaign, playing the Diviner, and then probably like Mind Thief Craghart or something like that. Because I haven't played with Diviner 2.0 yet, and this would be a good opportunity to do that. I'll probably just use starting characters as well, in order to... Continue to keep the stream as stream slash vods as spoiler free as possible. Also, hello. All right, so looks like we're good then. There we go. There's the one damage. So we're going to do a heal. We gain one experience. We just remove the poison. Jeez, we gain no experience. And we're going to do a small move to here. I would highly recommend running Hatchet with Diviner 2.0. Yeah, no kidding. That would be fun. You can use Diviner outside of Forgotten Circles, absolutely. And this is just a default move. Alright, the corpses take one damage. This one's dead. 
This one suffers one. Okay, so here we want to go as late as possible, so that if they move, they don't get to hit us after we move. I assume you'll give the new characters in digital a spin when they're released. Yes, absolutely. Oh, to be clear, I'm still going to be playing digital on Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'm just doing one day a week of this campaign. At least for now. We'll see how it goes. Um, it lets you take the plus threes early and see them bump to the top pretty consistently. That sounds fun. One we won for the win. Indeed it is. This is a battle to the death. Okay, so that's the plus one move. That's not bad that they get that here. So he moves two. This is a two coin stack. This is a one coin, one coin, one coin. Okay. So then we're going to do this. We're going to move to here. And we're going to do this attack. Attack three, range two, immobilize, targeting him. Oh, I do love the Princess Bride references every time. You get me every time. All right, so I can long rest here. I get my shield back and I heal for two, but I don't think that makes sense. I think we should be fine just short resting now. Oh yeah, we're only supposed to take short rests. Oh, General Cicio, well played, trying to make me ruin my battle goal after I've worked so hard. I wish my summons could loot for me. Well, you should try the custom class that we played last night, Yenitz's Arbalist. Currently, it's level one summon, can loot. All right, I think it's fine to lose this. I wasn't here for the beginning. Yeah, sure. A likely story. Tell another one, please. All right, so I'm gonna make an immobilizing attack this turn, going as late as possible, since this thing is immobilized. And then I can just move on to the coins after, so by going late, right? And then next turn, I'm going to make this attack with the light consumed to hit for as much as I can, and then presumably go to another coin and end it. So the bottom that I play here doesn't matter too much. I guess I should theoretically keep a loot, and maybe accordingly I should take a big move? Yeah. It's kind of the same which one of these moves I take, but I guess we'll take this one. Okay. Again, because it's immobilized and I know it can't go after 87, this way it always goes, and then I get to attack it and move up, and it'll be immobilized for the following round, which that doesn't matter so much. Um, because then I'm going to go early, but this also creates light, and attacking with this with light allows me to always go before it at 10 and hit it and push it and presumably finish the scenario. Good position for a killer loot tune. I can. I'm not going to. I'm not going to overdo it. It's it's later than I wanted to go today anyway, kind of, and I'm also starving. Uh, just a second, actually. Actually, never mind. I was going to. I think my wife might be making pasta, but I realized that. Um, I have leftover Thai food to eat, so I don't need don't need no stinking pasta. All right, there we go. I guess they actually could go after 87. Their their move where they suffer damage is 91, but in that case, it wouldn't be attacking. With the move four top left of corpse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, potentially. Oh yeah, yeah. This turn. Yeah, yeah. This turn. I'm I'm definitely considering where I can go best. I just meant I'm not gonna milk it. Get some more snackies. Presumably finish. Yeah. All right, so he goes, loses the immobilize, then we go, we make an attack three, range three again. Hopefully we don't kill. Again, I'm not going to play around this. If we kill, we kill. Nope. Okay. So do three damage, immobilize again, and infuse light. And then we do a move four here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that is better. It's actually the same, right? If we go here or go here, it's actually the same. Because this is actually a two-coin stack. So if we go here, then we kill him. Next turn, we get two more coins by looting. If we go here, next turn, we loot, we get four coins. It's actually exactly the same. Although I think coins now is better than coins. I mean, like, the guaranteed coins is better. Depend on, on if your next kill hit, next hit kills. Yeah, correct. If it doesn't, though, there's another two-coin stack. There is no other two-coin stack. There will be a two-coin stack where I kill him. Otherwise, they're all ones. So I will just go here, since it doesn't actually change anything. And this is the lower amount of effort. OK, so it doesn't really change. This gives an experience on top. Yeah, it's OK. 
I could like try not to kill him or something to give myself an additional turn to go over there. This would allow me to pick up more gold, but for now I don't actually need gold that badly. I'll be happy to have it at some point, but the hunger wins out over the desire for gold. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I just, I just forget. All right, there we go. I guess, all right, so this was the argument. If he doesn't attack, although now I'm, I'm sad that I didn't play a larger move. I was going to say, if he wasn't going to attack, I could have considered doing it, but I guess I didn't play the move three. To be honest, this was a mistake. Oh, no, no, I wanted, no, yeah. I never should have played this, to be clear. I should have always played this and this, because if he did actually exactly what he's doing here, this turn I actually would have just moved here and not hit him, and then next turn I could kill him. Uh, and get all the coins. So this was actually a mistake playing this. I even thought about that. There's no need that I. There's no reason that I would need this bottom loot action because if I kill him, I get as many coins by playing a loot action as moving on his thing. Hungrier for food more than gold. Yep. Oh, taco sounds so good too. It's been a while since I've had Mexican. Oh, Mexican food. All right. Stop salivating. Game one experience. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll miss and we'll see. So draw. Oh my god, it actually happens. All right, so we do miss. That goes up there. Oh, I guess I don't have to be doing that, but whatever. We do still push him. And then we're going to do a default move with the bottom of Flaming Sickle. And we're going to move to here. This will allow us to get a couple more coins in the end. Is that better? Yeah, because... So we could stay here to not get uh, muddled and immobilized by him and just do the loot action, then he doesn't hit us because he's immobilized. But then next turn, if we kill him, we can't get any additional... We can only get one coin, whereas here, if we kill him next turn and then play the bottom loot action, we can get two coins. Okay, so then he goes, and we get muddled and immobilized. Short rest. Sure. That's actually probably the best card to lose, because I want to keep my bottom loot action, and I need to keep my top attacks. Uh, so I want to go before 32. I should make an attack 3, so I guess we're attacking with this and looting with this. And hopefully this kills, otherwise next turn we're going after 33. Or, well, I guess we're going 32, but yeah. Um, yeah, it always needs to be these exact two. Because an attack 3 makes sense, because since we're muddled, we we don't want to draw... I mean, if we draw minus 1 because of the muddle, we'd like to still kill here. Again, there's something to be said for not killing, because I get more coins, but the food calls. Oops, I guess we didn't press end around there. Boom, boom. Okay. Not trying to milk experience or anything like that. All right, start round. 71, sure. So we're going to begin by using the top of Shibla Desert to make an attack three on him. I guess even a minus one would kill. But actually, this way, even a minus two kills. I think we've already drawn the minus two. Yeah. Theoretically, we could have played a different top, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the 32 deals one damage to him, which one plus the direct damage is a win. 32 deals. Yeah, yeah with the attack. Because the minus two is out of our deck. So yes, it actually would be the same. But the 32 doesn't actually deal one damage to him, to be clear. I mean, just an attack two deals one damage is what you mean, if it hits. Because we've already drawn the minus one, or the minus two. Whereas here, drawing if, which I just wasn't paying attention to at this point. All right, so we attack Muddle. Sure, he's dead. We killed him. His 32. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No, 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 but that that's not... Uh, yeah, 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 I understand that. Oh, so what you mean is like next turn? Well, next turn we go at 32 anyway, so it doesn't change anything. It was just about having our initiatives before. It doesn't, I don't know what I was saying. Anyway, not important. I'm tired, especially after 11 hour stream yesterday. We did it. So then we do a loot one, and we get to loot this and loot this. And we successfully completed the scenario. That's, I did not think we were going to win, but we did. We did. Whew. The corpse is dead. It is indeed finally dead. It was close. I think we played pretty well overall, too, which is satisfying. I still hate the scenario, to be clear. And I'm super happy I don't have to come back. All right, so we got a check mark here. And we got a check mark here. We did not get any check marks for the Void Warden. But the Void Warden also got a mountain of experience, so. <sighs> Never didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the stream. Wasn't feeling too great this morning, but this cheered me right up. I'm glad. I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you weren't feeling well this morning, and I'm happy that the stream cheered you up. And um, I'm always happy to. I mean, 
I'm here four days a week, so I'm almost here, happy to cheer you up. Especially if you get joy out of my misfortune, which especially, I mean, happens a bit less when we play Gloomhaven Digital, because Gloomhaven Digital is a bit easy. Definitely happens more in, I mean, the stakes are definitely higher when playing base Gloomhaven. Base Gloomhaven is challenging and feels very fun, especially with this party. How, how long do you need to get into the rules of this game? Looks difficult. Oof. All right, so I guess if you're going to play on TTS, I mean, it's... It's tough. So my recommendation would be, so if you're looking to get into this game, so we'll, we'll give this answer quickly and then we can get into the post scenario stuff. If you're looking to get into this game, whether it's on TTS or whatever, I mean, so you have two options. You can either, like, first of all, TTS for like what I'm playing here, which is the Gloomhaven Fantasy setup, do not recommend. Um, not, the, not the best way to get into it. So you can play Gloomhaven Digital, which is like the version on Steam that costs more, I guess, by a little bit. Obviously, the I definitely wouldn't buy anything right now, whether you were looking to, if you already have TTS, you can just, Download the mods, and then there's nothing to do. Um, if you're looking to play Gloomhaven Digital, which is one of the two ways you could get into the game, then I would definitely, I mean, like, we're probably like a week away from the Steam, uh, Steam Halloween sale. Although maybe with a recent update, Digital went on sale, I don't know. Either way, I would wait for a sale, which regardless, I think should be within a week. If Digital is what you want, which is like the Steam version of the game. Digital is the plan? Okay, yeah. In that case... Yeah, so wait for a Steam sale. Um, how hard is it to get into, or how long is it going to take to get into? So that has like a tutorial system, which sort of helps. I don't find it to be an extremely effective tutorial. Obviously, it's not what they, I think, intend to have as the ultimate tutorial. I think you won't understand everything about the game when you start playing, but I don't think that matters too much. You'll still have fun. So as far as if you actually want to read the rules, it's going to take a while. I mean, a couple hours at least to read the... I mean, like, I don't think it's a bad idea. If you don't mind reading rule books, I, I would recommend reading... Like, you can just find the Gloomhaven rule book online very easily. The, like, if you just type Gloomhaven rule book, you'll find the flippy book version, which is really easy to read through. Much easier than doing it on TTS, for example. Um, and I would recommend reading it, because then at least you'll understand everything, and that'll make doing this tutorial in Gloomhaven Digital and then playing Gloomhaven Digital easier. You don't have to. If you go in like that, you're more likely to misunderstand some rules. Digital is not on sale right now. Yeah, so then I would definitely recommend waiting a week because again, the, the Halloween sale will be here, and I almost imagine I'm almost certain that digital will be on sale. And that's not because I think digital is a bad purchase. It's just, I mean, being realistic, I guess it depends how important it is for you to play it right now and how important money is to me. Though typically, I would rather wait a week and probably pay like a third. I mean, a third off or half price. I think it's usually probably around a third off or something like that. Maybe half price. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen a sale. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it is complex without a doubt, but digital does make it easier. Like there's varying echelons of how difficult it is. So to get into, so if you play Jaws the Lion, which digitally you can only play on TTS, then this is the easiest way to get in by far. Jaws the Lion does a really good job teaching new players. And then after that, you've got digital. And then after that, you've got like learning base Gloomhaven. So I still think it's sort of like that. And yeah, you should be prepared for a bit of a commitment, but I think most people get into it reasonably quickly. Um, learn to use TTS as a learning curve pretty much regardless of the game. That's also true. That's a fair point. Okay, so let's do the thing. So here we got one coin, so three gold. Still a little bit away from our invis cloak, sadly. Here we got 21 gold. So that puts us at 40. Beautiful. And here we got only two coins. So that puts us at 10. Okay. We already did our check marks. Uh, I think there's probably some more rewards for this. 10 gold each, plus one prosperity, and we unlock two scenarios. Okay, cool. I assume this is the updated track. I'll have to double check that, but I would have to, I imagine that it is. So this one's completed. We unlock four. And I guess our three was around here somewhere. Where is three? E11 G3. Oh, it was all the way. Really, it's all the way over there. Oh, it's the Inox camp. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. I was thinking of all the crypts and everything like that. I forgot about this pot potential little detour in the beginning. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, and then one prosperity we did. Ten gold each. Cool. So we actually can get our invis cloak. We'll do all our purchasing and stuff like that at the beginning of the next scenario. That's obviously interesting to talk about in the beginning. And again. The hunger is real. Um, so next we have experience. So here we gained 14. It's plus eight again, if I'm not mistaken. Just wanted, I mean, not, it wouldn't have changed, but yes, so 22 experience there. Wow, so that puts us at 40. Nice, way to go Void Warden. Maybe leveling up and getting us a nice initiative card. 
Uh, so here we had five, so 13. This is a little bit lower, 31. I like the Red Guards level ups the most. Hatches level ups. Well, I'm really excited to get Hatches level two, and then after that, I care a lot less. I guess level two, level three are both good because we get two level two cards. So seven, so we gained 15 experience. Oops, there we go. Okay, so we've gained our goal, we've gained our experience, we gained our check marks, we gained our rewards, we've gained everything we needed to gain. Looks like we're good. This is a lot of fun. I really look forward to more of this campaign. Um, this will be once a week, every Friday from now on. So if you do want to watch more, uh, no more. Let's play pop. Let's go. Sit back off. So yeah, if if you want to come see more uh, base Gloomhaven Haven with the Jaws Lion characters, feel free to stop by anytime on Fridays. Um, it's be all Friday uh, from now on, for the well for the foreseeable future at least until we level these all the way up, which will be a while. I might, depending on how much like, we'll see. Well, for now that we'll just leave it at that. Uh, so otherwise, next week I'm start streaming again on Monday. Stream Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, Monday is just Gloom Monday and Wednesday are just Gloomhaven Digital. We start at the same time, 1 p.m. GMT plus two. Um, Thursday we do Gloomhaven Digital and then some custom class testing, and then Friday it's just this. Uh, otherwise, if you ever have any questions or want to figure out when I'm next streaming, I mean, next stream you can find it in the schedule info, which should be down below. Otherwise, you can always ask questions or anything like that by contacting me on Reddit, um, which is just like reddit.com slash u slash gripeaway. Or obviously you can go to Discord, which I just linked there, and you can always ask me direct questions there, which I'm usually pretty quick to answer within 24 hours of the latest. Okay, thank you very much to everyone who tuned in today and this week. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of really satisfying streams this week, actually. So, yeah, it was really good. Thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. Thank you um, to, I guess, it's rare that I say this, so I certainly should. Thank you very much to, especially because we just used this again. Thank you very much to all the hard work that the people who make, uh, I doubt they're going to hear this, but uh, sending out good wishes never hurts. Thank you very much for all the hard work that the people who made both the the Jaws Lion mod to impart the characters, and also specifically um, Gloomhaven Fantasy setup, because the amount of effort that's gone into this mod is incredible, and it really makes playing on TTS uh, so much easier. And eventually, I'll get used to using things like automated item or coin pickup and everything like that. So again, thank you to them. And uh, yeah, well, that's it. I'm I'm gonna go eat. I'm starving. Uh, I'm starving and exhausted. It's been a long week, but a fun one. And I will hope you all who are watching have a nice weekend. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, similarly, uh, I will try to keep uploading content as quickly as I can. Take care, everyone, and see you soon.